all the way from down under. Yeah. Well, with that, like it is um, let's see. Let's check the time. It's currently 6 14 p.m. for me over in the oh, United yeah. States. Um and it's Saturday, isn't it? Yeah, it's Saturday. Yeah. It's 2 14 p.m. Sunday here. Wow. That's mm. crazy, man. That's crazy. The last time I'm a we day had ahead. what's up? <laughs> I'm a day ahead, man. <laughs> yeah, you're a day ahead, always. <laughs> and like I always make the joke that like with countries like Australia um new zealand i think even indonesia and malaysia it's like it's almost like someone took so long even on a flight to get over there that like mm. they're just like you know what a day's passed it's it'll be a day ahead or something they're just like nah screw it we'll, we'll do that instead but um you welcome just have to deal with it <laughs> yeah exactly like time yeah. traveling around the world man and i can't even imagine get super uh jet lagged you know with that time oh it yeah absolutely takes them a few days to settle in like <laughs> it's the same with us going overseas as well it's always a real trip trying to you're going like back in time so. you're like i feel younger somehow <laughs> <laughs> i wish it worked that way man <laughs> time traveling man well, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, and everything in between, welcome to the Anatomy Crosscast. I'm not sure if it's going to be episode 61, 62, 63. I have no clue. Hopefully, it'll be 61, as uh, this will most likely be the last episode if we don't get one recorded tomorrow on Sunday, that being November 12th, um, with a very special guest. But of course, tonight is also a very special guest. We're reaching over to New Zealand for the very first time. We can knock that off the list. I'm very proud of that. Um, as we are hosting Dan, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, just wanted to double check. So we are hosting Dan Ferguson of Utilize the Remains. This yep. is the vocalist and guitarist for the band. If you guys have seen one of their breakthrough singles, Overall and Slam Worldwide featuring Alex from Organectomy. Well, that was my entryway. That was my gateway, my introduction to this band. Absolutely love that track. Immediately reached out to the boys and utilized their remains. And well, here we are. It's been quite a bit of time since their newest album, Psychotic Abyss, came out. And I listened to at least like a quarter, if not half of it, on the way back home from doing an audition. Shout out to the boys in home turf. Um, I will be playing bass for them and providing backup vocals here in the near future. <clears throat> they are a hardcore slash beatdown band. Um, they have a whole EP's worth of various demos. And they were what seems to be they were looking for their final piece to the puzzle. It seems that I fit the bill as they and like it was just a great time. It was a great time hanging out with the boys. Uh, shout out to longtime buddy Jake um last name need not be dropped but i am excited to actually be in a band and have the opportunity to do more than just recording vocal stems at home sending it up to toronto and having my producer shout out to alex savanier um crank instrumentals crank drums program everything and then have well maybe one song out under blind without our failures but Tonight, it should be absolutely fantastic to uh, reach to another part of the world for the first time. Again, I can't emphasize enough that it's awesome knowing that on Spotify, we have a good chunk of listeners from all of the featured countries, including and not limited to Australia, Indonesia, the UK, uh, Belgium, Germany and so many other places. It's been such a pleasure talking to all these bands around the world, and we hope to keep just as fast and just keep moving forward. Eventually, talk to bands from Japan, China, and everything you can imagine. But let's go ahead and isolate to New Zealand tonight, talking with Mr. Dan Ferguson. Mr. M Ferguson, how are you doing tonight for starters? Oh, I'm good, thanks, man. Uh, it sounds like you got a pretty, uh, pretty cool thing going at the moment, eh? Yes, sir. I hope to be yeah. the David Attenborough of deathcore slam and death metal one day, somehow, <laughs> some way. We'll see how know. we'll see how that works. One day I've been telling I've been trying to manifest this for some time and it not like it's going to happen anytime soon, because either way, it's going to require major financial resources. But I think one dream that I would love to fulfill with this show one day is actually being there 
in person with all these musicians that I'm getting in touch with around the world and basically do in person sessions and just even bring a little laptop with me, bring a mic, hopefully not get robbed on the way. And then, mm -hmm. uh, you know, just go well, hang out with these like people a, in their home uh, countries. Do you even have hopes of doing your own sort of studio setup? Or? Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yep. I mean, for, <laughs> but gotta compete with uh, the Garza podcast someday. After all, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's awesome, man. He's getting so so many cool guests on at the moment, and yeah, real hot bands. And uh, I agree. Some I often I often tune into that one. Yeah. That's good. yeah, some of the bands on there I've even had on my own show, which is like, God damn it, he did it so Yo. much better than I did. <laughs> uh, you know, you got to start somewhere, bro. You got to yeah. start somewhere. Exactly. <laughs> Well, hey, tonight, do you mind if I uh, do you mind if I crack a beer for this? Is that right? Absolutely, no. You do you, <laughs> man. Get comfy, get cozy, bro. Yeah. In fact, you yeah, know I what? I have an idea. Someday I have a beer, man. Yeah, being that you're cracking <laughs> open a beer, I'm gonna go ahead and grab a couple Jello shots real quick. So we will be oh, right sweet. back. <laughs> okay. All right, everybody. Oh, we got the two Jello <laughs> shots, and I got a spoon because, like, they're they're pretty solid. No pun intended. <laughs> but this should be a pretty fun session tonight. Um, Mr. Ferguson, I'm not sure if you have had the opportunity to watch or listen to any of our prior episodes. Um, if not, that's completely fine. Um, cause uh, no, after I all, I can say I have, sorry, man. No, no, I haven't. No problem. Um, busy guy, busy guy, <laughs> busy guy. Exactly. Cause well, you're in hey, the shout out band. to bro Levi. Shout out to the bro <laughs> Levi. <laughs> but basically on the anatomy cross cast. Ladies and gentlemen, dear Cross Core, we in the first half will be doing the people part of the podcast, which is a lot of peace. Always has been, always will be. And basically, we're going to be truly going David Attenborough mode. We're going to learn as much about Dan Ferguson as possible as a vocalist, oh, as a guitarist, <laughs> his journey in becoming a musician, everything he feels is relevant. And like even just starting from the point of him like really just being intrigued by music and like i want to do that you know after that after that first half of the podcast we'll go into the second part which basically you're not going to exist as dan ferguson in that moment in that remaining half you're going to be answering questionnaire as if you are utilize the remains we're going to be yeah, asking right, you yeah. various clickbait questions that maybe perhaps you've heard in person. Um, Cause I know you guys went on a tour recently to promote your new album, psychotic abyss. So maybe some of these questions will kind of click and you're like, yeah, I've heard this before. Yes. You know, blah, 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 blah. And then after I probably, I probably haven't, man. I haven't, uh, you know, haven't done a whole heap of these or anything. So. Oh shit. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then after that, after we get those kind of clickbait in person, sweaty fan, maybe even drunk, stinky fan questions asked after that, we will go ahead and do track by track and lyrical analysis for psychotic abyss provide any and all context that you feel is relevant to that album and then after that we will briefly discuss about the future and that'll be the end of it and um i definitely tried to provide a disclaimer before that mr ferguson being that you are the guest tonight i want to be sure to provide as much commentary as possible as much runtime as possible within reasonable means according and catering to your day and maybe anything else you have going on over in New Zealand today. But you may take as much time as you want because the way I see it, people on the road might want more to listen to. They might want to be able to zone out for a longer period of time after that very rapid, um, fast paced intro. It's just like, literally it sounds like cocaine. Like the <laughs> intro sounds like cocaine and shout out to Agung as always from Makluk for cooking that up on the spot in the first place. Um, it's personalized shout podcast. Out to <laughs> <laughs> shout out to. Okay. No, yeah. Fuck. Well, no, well, I don't know anything about it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's insane. But um, with that being said, basically starting off, um, I'm thinking what we'll do as I've always done in the last couple episodes and for quite a dozen episodes, previously now um imagine yourself in an elementary class or like the beginning section of school um just like uh starting Ooh. from five to 12 taking me back bro taking <laughs> you back 
yeah, man. put yourself in that <laughs> scenario and basically pretend that you're standing up from the, for the class for the first time. <laughs> you're just providing a brief introduction, right, of who you are, what you yeah, do, yeah, yeah. um, and then we'll go from there. Um, I grew up in a in a small town right at the bottom of New Zealand, pretty much. Um, you know, it's as down under as you can get. Uh, <laughs> Our country's split into a few islands. The two main islands is the North and South Island. And um, yeah, right at the bottom of the South Island is a town called Invercargill. And uh, yeah, I grew up down there. Uh, spent, you know, birth till I was like 17 years old there. Uh, yeah, well, man, the early stages, it's kind of lame because so many people have the same origin story. Never. <laughs> uh, but mine truly was... Um, a classic case of uh getting into metallica when i was way too young you know um i think it was it was either my cousin or my my older brother that um gave me a copy of master of puppets and i would have been like seven or eight years old like i was really young and uh it gripped me straight away the the whole thing the i don't know it could have been just the intensity of it you know the guitar riffs the the whole lot i was just intrigued right from from the get-go you know um and from there it's just downhill like it can't like as you get older it's just downhill it's like heavier and heavier and heavier and uh until you fucking find yourself listening to the fucking dankest shit possible um yeah and you branch out and you get into different subgenres, and then you know, you're sick of metal for a while, so you start listening to other shit, and then you always right. come back to your favorite fucking metal, and it's just a endless cycle for me, bro. But um, if I had to go way back, yeah, that very first, uh, that very first influence was was definitely Metallica, and oh, yeah. they inspired me to pick up the guitar. Um, I had this shitty, shitty acoustic. Um, I think it was like a Black Ashton thing that. I would listen to the riffs and try and play them by ear. Like it was, you know, right at the, right at the very beginning of learning guitar, I didn't know about guitar tabs. So right. I kind of figured the only way was to, to listen and try play it yourself. Um, and I think that actually, that helped me a lot as a musician in general, like, um, sometimes ignorance is bliss. That's one example. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it was like being that super young age and ha just having to, like try try that path out with using your ears and listening to the notes on the fretboard and and you know it might not be technically the same way they play it like uh right it still kind of sounds right so you, you're rolling with it um so I, I would have spent a few months doing that with with early metallica songs and um once i discovered guitar tabs online you know as a kid you find ultimateguitar.com and yeah the, oh man that's like holy shit. you hope you don't have favorite. to pay a monthly subscription <laughs> <laughs> oh no back then man it was all free like, <laughs> yeah um yeah this is yeah that that subscription thing i think came in in later years and it did yeah 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 back then it was all just um user base like people uploading their own tabs and yeah. other people rating the tabs so that they you know if they if they had five stars that's everyone going yeah bro this is legit this is correct <laughs> yeah. you know holy shit you got this is canon on. how the fuck did you do that you know <laughs> right um and i yeah a lot of them didn't even have access to the band's tabs or actual music they just were such good musicians they nailed it you know yeah so you, you download those and try to learn your favorite tunes and that's basically how i got okay at guitar as a kid you know right do you remember all my favorite metal tracks do you did you say master of puppets was the first ever metallica song yeah. you learned yeah uh i wouldn't say that's the first song i learned uh it was definitely the first album i heard right uh, and got into it you... i think probably what i tried to learn would have been something like into sandman or you know, yeah something pretty basic <laughs> like it wouldn't have been yeah i wouldn't have started there <laughs> right it wasn't until later years that i attempted shit like that i don't think i ever got it either i don't i don't think i fucking i don't think i got to the end of master of Puppets. <laughs> oh boy. well I mean, I'm sometimes failed, failed metalhead, dude. Oh, not even. I can safely Stop. say I can't play that song, dude. You're I like the James Hetfield of death metal, bro. No, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe that for a second. <laughs> well, here's the thing, too. Like you mentioned Metallica, I'm like, wait a minute. 
Oh, bro, you you just cut out on me, dude. My my favorite thing on the show, guys. The my, <laughs> the cutout. Uh, yeah, the, the kids. Cut. Shout out to the cutout. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> but like when you first mentioned Metallica, I'm like that immediately clicked in my brain because mm. I really the thing that stuck out in my brain about utilize the remains neon green album cover very like acid (laughs) trip album cover but the thing is what also stood out to me was that you were riffing and you were chugging your guitar as well as doing vocals i'm like this is insane i suppose yeah that's that that will be you know you're probably right man that will be a hit field influence oh i want to i want to be a front man not just a vocalist or yeah yeah seriously guitar player you know it's like i want to do both it's probably you're probably right man it helps you stand out that's for damn sure because it requires a lot more talent um I, yeah, you're right. A lot of slam bands are standalone vocalists, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. No, it's a, yeah. Pat yourself on the back. Work in our favor, bro. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> but do you, by, by chance, so you said you kind of immediately just dived headfirst into learning metal songs, right? Mm-hmm. So obviously, all kids who are trying to get into music, they're trying to learn guitar. They have the awkward mm-hmm. guitar classes and stuff. So. Mm-hmm. D- by chance do you remember the first song that you successfully learned on any type of guitar that you were like oh, yeah I do this, man. This is- it was um do you know oh, i think is it horse with no name that song it's like two Ooh. chords the entire song so, <laughs> i think it's a oh, i could be wrong but I, i'm pretty sure it's like a simon and garfunkel song oh really okay yeah yeah uh yeah it wasn't even a middle song that was the first song i learned Hey, um, I mean, after all, it wasn't was, a metal song. It was, I was, it was from a it was from a guitar teacher. So he gave right. kind of he's like, dude, if you learn these two two simple chords, you can play this entire song. It was one of yeah. those kind of guys. No, that's, like, that's, that's so that's where it's at. Um, I think that was the very first thing I learned. But after that, in my own accord, I wanted to delve into riffs and yeah, um, learning chugs and what I that's like where it starts it, man yeah. you're just like smoke <laughs> on the water or something here like commonly yeah, yeah. over here in the u.s is like smoke on the water um riptide yeah, that would have been that would have been one <laughs> of the first riffs my my guitar teacher uh gave me yeah, yeah. smoke on the water it's a classic dude smoke on the water is so much more metal than some people realize too it's like dun 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 like you, people um Imagine People that with the blast behind it. Contextualize <laughs> as well, man. Like, yeah, for for the time period, that's heavy as shit. You mm-hmm. know? And the same with bands like Black Sabbath and stuff. It's like, yeah, it may sound like rock or today, but back then, man, that was back then. Heavy, that was dude. satanic, bro. <laughs> oh yeah, bro. That was that was the heaviest shit you had, you know. So yeah, it was, um, it was awesome. And with with that in mind too, asking about like the first song you've ever played, are there any new songs you've learned that you're like, holy shit, I've really made it far? Or like, are there still songs <laughs> you're trying to learn and you're still not able to conquer just yet outside of utilize I mean, the um, remains? Yeah, well, I'm actually I can't uh, I can't say what band, but I'm actually learning um, learning songs from uh, a band I'm about to join. Uh, oh shit. Yeah, yeah, learning their their guitar parts. So um, that's been quite challenging. It's a lot more, I, I it's a lot more technical than the stuff I write for Utilize. So oh it's shit, been really good. It's been real fucking good for my playing. Actually, just sitting down and and learning all that stuff. Like I, it feels I, like I, I'm yeah, at the right at this, again. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that's the first time I've sat down to learn other people's songs in a long time. So it's been really good for me, actually. Good, um, good. I wish I could say who it is, but it's just timing. I can't say right now. So, yeah, people. What will time? Know eventually. The like five people out there in New Zealand that give a fuck will know in like you know due time. and they'll blow it up. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Or maybe I, maybe I blew that up. Maybe the like three people out there that care. <laughs> <laughs> fair enough, man. And like I, five I'm excited to hear about that. Yeah, they're, they're a real sick band, and they've been one of my favorites in in the New Zealand metal scene for a long time. So it's it was an honor to get asked to join, and uh, Fuck yeah, yeah I'm super excited about it. So I would be too. Like, yeah. say for example, like um, in, in my in my case, it would be like probably Warm Shepherd or Shrine of Malice. Like if they asked me, they're like, "Hey, you want to play bass?" I'm like, "Fuck yeah, dude, dude!" <laughs> like, You'd be really excited about it. Yeah, I'd be yeah. really excited. So. <laughs> We we and asked guess, that yeah um uh fucking from there 
you know, you start with bands like Metallica and then adjacent bands like Slayer and Megadeth. And yeah, um, that was sort of the early years. It's a very archetypal, you know, metal origin story, but um, it's unfortunately it's the truth. Honestly, that's <laughs> well, why, why do you think I want you here? I don't care if it sounds corny. Keep talking, bro. <laughs> Keep telling yeah, your story. And then um, I was of the era where the latest modern metal bands that were coming out when I was like an early teenager, like sort of 10, 11, 12, 13 years um, were bands like Killswitch Engage and Trivian and, you know, that kind of sound, that that uh, that metalcore sound. Yeah, the metalcore. Um, which is like, it's uh, people talk about metalcore today and it doesn't sound like that. Like it, it's not no. the same as that era of metalcore, you know, and it's like that's that's what I grew up on is it like the good cop, bad cop shit, you know, it's like, oh, and then the, this is the... Yeah clean singing it's like switching between that if like, you uh, can't see yeah, me yeah. on the side and <laughs> fuck man like <laughs> i can you know as on the outside i can just fully see the cheesiness and how like people don't like it and but man it hits a soft spot with me because i grew up on that shit you it's know nostalgia bro <laughs> yeah nothing wrong some, with of, that. some of the riffs man some of the riffs in like early kill switch albums like alive or just breathing they're heavy as fuck like they're like big chugs and um real like hardcore influenced as well you can definitely tell um and yeah so that kind of era took up a few years for me and it was quite good for the guitar playing like some of it wasn't super easy you know yeah especially some of the like early trivium records were quite bitsy on guitar so attempting that shit was pretty good for the hands and right um i think i think it was when i was around 15 or 16 uh trivium went out on a lot of tours with the band Whitechapel. um they took them around like heaps and they came to new zealand when we were kids and uh, that's when i started listening to Whitechapel. and that's a sort of that's a foot into the the like holy shit what's this yeah what's this brutal like uh yeah like i didn't even know like i didn't call it deathcore at the time because i didn't know what i was really listening to or anything like um it was just heavy music to me as a kid like um so that i reckon actually got me more into um heavier bands you know but yeah. like it, i was already listening to a few bands like suffocation and some death metal as well so it was i was both listening simultaneously modern deathcore sort of stuff and old school death metal at the same time like um i didn't really give a fuck about like we didn't have scenes like that over here in new zealand it's not right. like the states where it's super broken up because you've got a massive population that you can split up different scenes and shit it doesn't work like that here it's like a one big metal scene you know that's uh, cool yeah it is it is pretty cool so like my mindset when you're a kid is you don't you don't you don't really give a fuck what's cool to listen to or anything yeah. you just you're searching for the, the gnarliest stuff you search for riffs, all so the like, local stuff because it's all going to pull into one area. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, not to me. Yeah. I can, I'll, I'll probably talk about it later. I could go Absolutely, on about, bro. I could go about on about it. the New Zealand metal scene. That was a huge influence to me growing up as well. I'm talking about bands we would all know at the moment, but um, right. Yeah. Fucking. So yeah, sort of simultaneously listening to Heart Out Suffocation and, you know, my friends, um, some of my best mates were showing me like Hate Eternal and I was quite young. Um, and then in my own accord, I was also loving bands like Whitechapel and uh, Casey Strain and Despised Icon and um, Waking the Cadaver and fucking Ingested and all these sort of slams, such good shit. Or brutal bands, you know. Um, it all accumulated into me just wanting to make a super heavy band at some point. And um, I guess I've had favorites over the years that have stuck out that i probably don't pull influence heaps from like one of my all-time favorite bands is my sugar and i don't I, I struggle to get influenced musically from them but they always they're one of my favorite bands of all time just yeah like to listen to and shit like that like um bands like mastodon i you know i fell in love with when i was growing up and i still love them but they're not some they're not a band i would take influence from necessarily and utilize like yeah. maybe subconsciously without realizing it and composition techniques maybe but other than that that's not you know and there's see, so many bands i love that don't pull into my band you know there's right a lot probably more so than than they actually do you know 
Yeah. And that, that's that's what's really unique is half the time the musicians I'll host on here, the bands I'll host on here, most of the people that happen to be music enthusiasts that I know, they will have all their like top five bands and their favorite bands of all time. And mm. all of them, if not most of them, all of them have some type of creative influence on what they make. Right. This mm. is a unique scenario. You're like, uh, yeah, I like this band, but I'd like to keep it separate. Right. Or like. Yeah you unintentionally yeah. end up keeping it separate from your own creative process. Not many people can mm. do that or will do that. Cause they're like, I want this to be, of course my own band, but like I'm a white chapel stand and I like their newer <laughs> stuff. So I want to make death core mixed with Creed or Nickelback esque <laughs> dad rock. And like, I, I want, I want to take a second and say the Valley and kin to me, because I got into them during uh mark of the blade, which was, um, I forgot the name of the song, but like that's when they started doing the softer stuff mm -hmm. to me. Like it's also because I wasn't a part of the MySpace deathcore era. So I I never understood mm. it. I yeah, that's when the, I found them, you know, they were yeah, in MySpace. Exactly. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so like I, this I, is Exile was coming out. I think it was, maybe the third one might've been coming out of the sun. But yeah, right. That's what I was getting. That com I completely missed that. I completely missed mm -hmm. that. And I'm kind of glad that I did because mm -hmm. there are plenty of really iconic records from that era. Mostly, I can personally say I like Suicide Silence's older albums from the MySpace mm -hmm. era. I've never mm -hmm. listened to Card Effects. Hell, I went to their um, their Phoenix local Necromantium date, right? With To the Grave, Signs of the was Swarm. Was recently, was it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. This was um, last night. Um, Good show. Yeah, definitely a good show. But like the thing is, I don't I've never really found an interest in Carnifex, right? Mm -hmm. And that's an OG MySpace era deathcore band. Yeah. But like I've never really cared about their sound. I've never like I'm kind of the same with you, man. I've never I've never really checked them out in a great deal. I've heard a few songs. I'm like, that's pretty cool. But yeah, like this that, is cool. I haven't had a phase or anything. Like, yeah. yeah. Like I respect their place in the scene because not only are they a MySpace deathcore band, but also mm. other than the breathing process, who I'm personally buddies with shout out to the team over at the breathing process love those guys um carnifex to me definitely was like the original blackened deathcore band or at least mm -hmm. one of them and there mm -hmm. just happened to be a boom in 2019 with bands like shadow of intent enterprise earth trying to malice uh lorna shore like lorna shore blew the fuck up in 2020 Damn, did they walk man holy shit yeah they're seriously. massive <laughs> <laughs> but um i i've always like understood and acknowledged card effects as that og blackened esque deathcore band but other than mm -hmm. that i'm like eh, i've never really cared about it so mm -hmm. like i stayed until signs of the swarm because they were the co-headliner and after that i'm like okay i'm good i'm i'm, I'm going home <laughs> like, mm -hmm. i felt bad for what it was worth but it's like well i just never found an interest in card effects signs of the swarm are cool as fuck aren't they they it's, are they're doing real well at the moment they're doing super good and signed to I think, Central um, Media. Like their new album is really good. Our they friends have... in Organic to me did a wee run with them when That's they came right. out here. Yeah. yeah. And um, they said great things about them. And yeah. Awesome no, dudes. I, I, I love those time. guys. I, I've had yeah. David on the show before. He he was really fun to talk to. But that was like back in 2021. That was um mm. that was even before uh their last unique leader records album, um Alp Severe came out. Mm -hmm. And um, I interviewed him around the time that they released Pernicious. And I'm like, when's the new album coming out? And he's like, soon. And like, that's all he said. <laughs> and that was the end of it. But he was a great guy to talk to him. Yeah, very cryptic. Um, Sometimes you have to be, you know, you're not, you're not in a position to disclose stuff depending on the timing. You know? Exactly. Exactly. And sometimes it's better just to not mention any of that until mm. any and all loopholes are just closed like there's there's yeah. no weakness in the system there's no uh there's no um there's no weak brick in the in the wall yeah. i guess another Nothing's brick in the wall come and bite you in the ass exactly exactly but um yeah i was i i guess i just never really cared about card effects and i have yet to listen mm -hmm. to their new album but um great show last night uh it was really cool to see to the grave over here in the states for the very first time like i've been waiting for them to come over here forever now and then seeing the last 10 seconds of life for the first time was also really fun but 
this is not like this is my podcast, sure, but like we're we're hosting you. So let's continue with your story. No, no, no <laughs> this is a cool yarn, man. I'd I'd rather do it more like a yarn than uh, you know, like an interview as such. Right, absolutely. Yeah. Um so but uh, you know, you, yeah, you, yeah, what you was got into all those to? bands. Fucking, um yeah, up to that sort of that heavy, you know, I would have been like 15 or 16 getting into that sort of early deathcore sound. Acacia Strain, man. They're still one of my like all time favorite. They're bands. solid, Just, dude. I love how much they've evolved over the years. And um, I was really worried when uh, their old guitar player DL dropped out. Mm. Um, you know, I was like, I knew he was a pretty main songwriter in the band and, you know, had been since pro- I think the beginning. So when that happened, I was like, fuck, man, how are they going to? how are they going to keep going without them and yeah they've they've really done well and um yeah maybe took them an album or two to get into stride without them but now that they they've found their new sound it's fucking pummeling dude it's very thaw beat down oriented yeah. it's so yeah good. you can hear the you can hear the hardcore influence starting to thicken up a bit yeah. more uh and yeah it's it's like i love them still to this day um yeah, and even White Chapel, man, you're about to talk about the Valley and Kin. Like, yeah, I'm a weirdo who uh I get a bit of shit for it, but I do like those albums. Like oh, oh god, man. Maybe not. Um I haven't really given Valley a, a good go, but recently I gave Kin a good go. And uh, I want to get that on vinyl, yeah. man, so bad. I um yeah, same actually, dude. I'd love I'd love to get it on vinyl. And it's a bit of a soft, you know, cock rock album for a heavy death call band that once was, but um whatever i think it's awesome like i don't really yeah i don't really care to um hold a band to any sort of standard or sound it's like you do whatever yeah. you feel you like, do man. what That's you're cool. comfortable doing you're totally, investing yeah. the money into studio time like who gives a yeah. shit what other people think Fucking up. and like it's cool to see someone who's never given singing a shot coming out the gate giving it a crack oh, he clean sounds so he sounds really good, good. Yeah. like I'll tell you what. I love dude. like most of the people who rip on it are like, so I'd love to hear you giving it a shot because I doubt you'd be as good as that. Seriously, guy, man. man. Like, <laughs> oh my God. It, and I, it kind of like made me a little sad when they posted uh, more recently that they're working on their next album. They're like, don't worry, this one's going to be heavy. I'm like, well, fuck, dude. I actually like the kin. I like the valley, <laughs> but hopefully they'll they'll continue to bring that back. But maybe it'll be like the intro and outro. Maybe it'll be a song in the middle. Who cares? I think it's from a genuine but, place like i think yeah they genuinely might be done with that sort of era of their sound and they yeah wanna, they want to touch back on some heaviness like i don't and think it's i i that's my personal opinion anyway i don't think it's a um like a retaliation to any fan response necessarily right. or you know just like genuine, caving like, into fan response yeah you know because they have done like what a good three or four albums like of the softer ish sound so they only like, really like i would say that kin was the first time they actually embraced that but it worked really really well the valley mm-hmm. like you had hickory creek and then i think um you can hear it coming through yeah, yeah. Um, mm-hmm. and it was like it was like bleeding through a little bit, but they're like, Oh, put a band-aid on that. We don't need that to be just gushing out blood just yet. And then Kin allowed them to just fully embrace that. And I'll tell you what, dude, the Valley and Kin, I was listening to those albums on repeat so many times last year because I was over in mm-hmm. Tennessee. I wasn't in Knoxville, but I was three oh, hours cool. away from it. So like yeah, yeah. I would do late like, night. Oh, what drives. are the bands from this area? Like, yeah, man. And like, mm-hmm. oh my god listening to that album like this is what tennessee feels like musically it's nice mm. and dark it's still considerably primitive because you know the kkk mm. was established in tennessee loki um mm. so like you know it, it was dark it was spooky but me being born and raised here in the desert in phoenix arizona primarily going over to tennessee it was so refreshing because like we actually had cycling seasons during the spring and summer yeah sure it was a little bit muggy but then at night you had fireflies. You had like the the wow. humidity actually helped with cooling Tennessee down a little bit, what, right? What were you doing there, like? Um, in Tennessee. So me and my buddy moved in with his immediate family. Uh, we just like wanted to take an opportunity, take a shot. We were planning on getting a house. Everything fell through. Uh, mm-hmm. The entire immediate family, instead of like splitting up per se, we all just moved into one house, and it was just like they they kind of hated it for the rest of the time so that entire year like we moved into that house um i was working i worked like two different jobs 
and um, fell in love with the Nashville scene, fell in love with Nashville, fell in love with Murfreesboro, went to Knoxville once, almost got stranded. That was fun. Um, almost got sn- uh, stuck in a snowstorm on the way back after driving back home at like 3 a.m. And it's like January, which is like, <laughs> it's just so bad. But man, check on check on the frozen soul and get through the storm, man. You know? Right, exactly. <laughs> but it was so worth it. Shout out to again the boys and the 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 fam, um, the absolute brothers and sister, and uh, the breathing process as well as the brothers and Worm Shepherd because they were doing the ritual hymns tour or the labyrinthian hymns tour. Um, they went to Knoxville, so I'm like, fuck it, I have to go, and mm-hmm. I took my buddy's car with me. I lost the spare keys that he gave me inside the venue or somewhere around the area. So I was stranded for three hours, bro. And it was just like, it was bitter. It was cold. It was wet. I liked it, but it's like, well, I feel bad because now my buddy and his brother have to drive all the way out here three hours later with the original set of keys. And then three hours later, we were all back home. And it was like 6 (laughs) a.m. Got (laughs) got stuck in a snowstorm. It was so bad. And like it, ended up because it was so cold and because it was january in tennessee like by the time i got home i didn't have a defroster in the car and my windshield actually froze over so by the time i was making that final turn to get to the house i was like peeking through maybe an inch sliver in the windshield and like traffic it it was such a nightmare but it was worth it it was so fuzzy to hear that because january over here is like summer it's starting yeah i starting to get hot you know (laughs) man I'm um, done with winter by that point. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but yeah, it just listening to those two albums, man, like you listen to I Will Find You, you listen to Anticure, mm. you just look off into the night with like barely any streetlights compared to here in Phoenix where everything is illuminated. Everything looks like mm. just a lightning bug stuck in place per se um, or yeah. a firefly stuck in place. It was just like, it was so different, but it was so refreshing. I'm like, man, I'm starting to utilize a southern accent now. I feel cool. <laughs> I'm in Tennessee. I'm in Nashville. Problem, it, it'd take a matter of day. I'd do the same thing, man. I'd be a matter of days and I'd start to put on the twang. <laughs> yeah. I know. It's I'd, I'd fucking so fun I'd love to it. do. <laughs> and like when you're over there, it makes sense. It's like I'm allowed to have a southern twang. And my mom's, <laughs> my mom's side of the family, they're from Texas. So like there, there's already a little bit in there. So it comes pretty naturally to me, but like being over in Tennessee, it was like one of the funnest things ever. I, I, I mm. loved utilizing the accent. Not many people did over there because a lot of them were also coming from Arizona because we're having mm. um, a major, I call it the great Eastern migration started back in 2019, 2020 housing market in California and the West coast has been skyrocketing. So everybody's moving eastward. Californians mm. are going to Arizona because we're next door neighbors, but everybody in Arizona who like is getting mm. run out, right? They're just going farther east, going to places like the deep south, Tennessee, mm-hmm. Alabama, Georgia, uh, Florida, mm. both of the Carolinas. Mm. And we we followed suit. We were like, you know what? Let's go ahead and try this out. Had lots of fun. And I would have stayed See, out a there lot if of I people could, were, but... A lot of people are moving to Austin, aren't they? Like I follow a yeah. lot of that, that comedy scene and everyone's fucking... Everybody's going there, to but... Austin. That's that's yeah. one of the major cities. And have if you've been there before, yeah. dude? Um, I've driven through there a couple times and funny thing, my ma side of the family is from Austin, Texas, but mm-hmm. overall it's like, um, technically I only ever lived there for a week because of like just issues going on inside the family. And then we immediately moved back. I'm like, no, I want to stay here. And they're like, well, too bad. We're going back. I'm like, God damn it. Yeah. And it was I just heard the whole it's thing. a pretty, pretty nice city. Yeah, no, um, Texas is really fun. It's just for mm. the most part, it's really flat. Uh, so like <laughs> not that yeah. much different from here in arizona like the I north take a trip to canada and hit those mountains i suppose oh you know. yeah i oh, i miss having mountains around me i miss having <laughs> green around me it's so depressing yeah. out here dude oh, but man. where are you currently sorry uh phoenix phoenix, phoenix arizona right. yeah. yeah where asu is one of the nation's most infamous uh college party schools right. or something <laughs> it's so bad it's like uh uh well, like frat boy culture yeah in. oh my yeah, yeah, god yeah. the frat Very boy good. culture is insane like don't funny, ever I, I um the city i'm currently living in right now dunedin in new zealand i guess is probably the the new zealand equivalent of 
in our university is is where for years and years a lot of people from around the country would would study to you know but to go and party mainly rather than learn <laughs> i suppose they came down here because it's the party culture university oh my yeah. god <laughs> so well, I, so know, be it, right? I know about that you know yeah i, no, I lived through it <laughs> i did yeah, some it's, dumb shit it's, when i was uh... young it's so bad. It's so bad. Like I've, I'm looking into starting school for sound and audio engineering here soon. Oh, with cool, the, man. Yeah. Yep, which yep. is like really exciting. I'm really big into that myself. Like, um, I taught myself, like I haven't been to, I haven't been to school for it, but I'm huge into audio engineering. Like, massively. It seems to be pretty important when it comes mm. to making music and recording music. Yep. So I'm like, why not? <laughs> I've been into it since I was a little kid. Like I started messing around with it when I was about 14 or 15. That's cool. That's actually and really ever cool. since then I've just been trying to hone my skills and hone my craft and I've recorded a few other bands and now and then, but in the future, man, in the coming years, I really want to like get quite into it. Like do it, man. Take it more seriously. Yeah. Acquire some more clientele, be a New yeah, Zealand yeah. I've got, local got a few just... more bits and bobs to get gear wise, but yeah. I've got like most of it. Uh, yeah for the most part i've got pretty much all i need you know? it looks like it. you got a whole wall of shit behind you dude <laughs> like i mean that, that's just one of my amps bro this, <laughs> <laughs> i just uh i wheeled it inside um from our band shed because i wanted to use it at home so right it, it's been in in my uh in my bedroom for a while <laughs> right no it's awesome it takes man. takes up a chunky amount of space bro yeah, so, and I guess that's actually a pretty yeah. good segue because, like, as we're yeah. you know learning a little bit more about you over time, um, having a nice casual conversation over some drinks, um, <laughs> I was wanting yeah. to uh, immediately kind of dig into uh, when you like if you can pinpoint when you actually started getting into sound engineering because that's the like out of left field. I'm like, what you engineer too, bro? Uh, yeah, that would have been um, yeah, I, yeah, I think. Yeah, around about the age 14 or 15, um, messing around with these early shitty um, Digitech FX pedals that could also act as like a interface with a USB cable. Like this is yeah. early, early shit back in, um, back in the 2000s. Uh, and my mate had one and he let me borrow it. And from there, I was like, I discovered you could record straight to the computer, straight to my home computer. Um and from there, I was like, oh, I wonder if there's a way you can get like um, fake drums, you know, is there yeah. any such thing as like drum software that like I didn't know at the time. I was just a kid, you know, um, and then I started looking into it. So, oh, shit, there's things like drum kit from hell and all these like cool toys you can play <laughs> around with if you uh, program it with MIDI, which I was already doing um, in Guitar Pro anyway. Uh, so if you isolate the drums and export the drum track out of Guitar Pro as a MIDI file, you can just drag and drop that into drum software and in a DAW, and it's pretty much ready to go, like how you programmed it, you know? Right. Um, a lot of people do it inside the DAW with the the roll or the like the little diamonds or the squares or whatever, <laughs> um, right. and they go along, and that's a perfectly great way of doing it if you're quick with your keys and shit. But um, <laughs> because I have to often tab out the music to uh send to other musicians anyway yeah um it's already done at that point so i don't want to do it again inside the daw so i just export out a, a tab software right um so that's when i started doing that as a kid like writing my own little riffs and songs and stuff um that's I really cool re record straight to the computer with this digitech i think it was called a um digitech uh rp5 yeah rp500 or something like that um and it was this multi-effects board essentially it was mainly to plug into an amp i think but okay um you could uh, it was the very start of like being able to usb tone to the the computer and it worked really well like it had this like a 51 fake 5150 on it like pv amps and stuff that you could yeah mess around with and that's how i really started getting into it is just messing with fake drums and that shitty digitone um <laughs> and from there it it just got it evolved like i learned about um in the box plugins when i was a bit older a few years later i was like oh you can actually start to mix your stuff without having to have all the outboard gear and all the crazy stuff and i guess yeah that's been my goal ever since is being able to how can you produce the best end result mix and master possible in the box without yeah. without anything 
you don't need much other than your guitar and a cable sometimes you know right and a mic and a microphone to do some vocals like minimal gear wise but um, extensive use of plugins in the box and yeah from there yeah i've just been sort of messing around a lot of um, youtube tutorials a lot of book a lot of book reading a lot of um you're doing the yeah. homework man yeah i've done it over the years like i've done it for a long time and i'm at the point where i'm getting pretty okay at it now like a little confidence in the under the under the belt and yeah yeah i've got I've got a lot to work on of course like it's a one of those fields you never quite master i don't yeah. think it's, well, a, it's you, sort of like chasing the dragon as as audio yeah. engineer. You know, it's like you're always looking for the the best ways to do things and the best quality and like um, more efficient ways to do things. And yeah, it's kind of yeah, it's just never ending learning, which is kind of cool because it's a great thing yeah. to set your mind to and a great hobby to get into. And exactly, um, I do want to make it more. Uh, I do want to make a more professional service out of it in the future. So I can help out my like fellow musicians and make their projects come to life and and that's the do thing the best too possible you know it's such a cool process I I'm in love with the process you know good yeah because the thing is like any creative medium or any hobby that you truly invest into well as far as I'm concerned it's a hobby one because it's fun mm. it's something that mm. you enjoy on the side of like mm -hmm. providing yourself a financial backbone to then invest right yeah. but at mm. the same time. Because most of the time these hobbies are creative mediums, you mm -hmm. never, ever fully master it. There's always something no, no. new to do, no. right? <laughs> yeah. And yeah. that's what makes it fun. That's what makes I it think just... It's a, good, it's a good mindset to have when it comes to these things as well. It's like, oh, I'm forever learning, you know. Forever learning. Forever learning. And it's the same with, you know, even the band work as well. It's You learn better ways to do things live. Exactly, and, man. You know, more efficient ways of doing things. and uh, Yeah. Yeah, it's it's forever learning, pretty much. Yeah, and like yeah. It, it's it's more or less the fact of are you willing to learn? Are you willing mm. to fail? And are you learning? Are you willing to get better? Yeah, mm. cool. Keep going. Yeah, totally. If you want to make it in any sort of um, music industry or you know shard of the business, whether it be engineering or doing the band stuff or yeah. managing bands or anything, it's like. Trial and uh, error, man. Full well, man. Yeah, trial and error. And the qualities you're going to need as a human being is like perseverance and, yeah. uh, um, you know, yeah, just never giving up at it and never always being willing to, to, yeah, learn, learn new things. And, um, yeah, I think perseverance is the biggest one. Yes. Because it's pretty easy to get defeated by a lot of things because, you know, you're always making mistakes and sometimes they're public first. mistakes. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Like, oh, fuck, you know. And especially as you like, for example, with bands and playing live, not that I know anything about personally playing live, except for playing it's an fun. acoustic cover. <laughs> yeah, it's really fun. Um, the only live performance I've ever done was a cover for Beartooth's uh, The Lines. And I did the acoustic version of that. Cool. I did that all by myself. It was in front of Sad. a whole bunch of people I didn't know. And, you know, I, I messed up a couple times, but at the end of it, I never stopped. Like I yeah, maybe nice. did a little bit wrong on the strumming pattern, but that's you it. You would have felt fucking awesome after it, you know. And I did. And then yeah. nobody I knew was there to see it. Damn like it. <laughs> nobody. So I just rode my board home with my bass guitar on my back, rode all the way home. And like, yeah, I mean, I just performed live or something like that. I think I either rode all the way home with my bass guitar on my back just riding down a street in uh in gilbert which is pretty close to me or i um i think i maybe rode somewhere and then got a ride home i either way i remember that being a very lonely night i'm like i'm proud of myself but it was just sad that despite me being involved in music i had absolutely no audience except for the teachers <laughs> that were helping me learn how to play the stuff in the first place or maybe perhaps i just never told anybody cuz i'm like it's just a, it's just a stupid acoustic show like mm. i don't care about it this is just like to say i did it it's been so long though so i don't remember um how exactly that went but other than that i have no experience playing live so mm. I can only imagine the trial and error of messing up during a live performance, but mm. that's also part of the process. That's like, okay, you're doing this now. You're doing this officially. Do mm. your best. 
And that's all that matters. If you trip and fall into the crowd, well, you might need to call an ambulance or something, depending on the injury you caused to yourself or others. But other yeah. than that, never be afraid of the what well, ifs. It's just each 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 show you go into. Exactly. Like, oh, be I'm careful. Give my best shot. Yeah. yeah. Give it your best yeah. shot. Be careful. Give your best shot. And um, sometimes if you give in to the energy of the moment, you can just have a really good time in it. Exactly. It and, be in the moment. Um, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Don't, don't get too into your head like make remember to enjoy it you know that's what i, I always try to tell myself because yeah you put a put a lot of effort into organizing these things a lot of the time and um when it comes to that moment you're like well i may as well enjoy it because you know it'd be a damn waste to not you know exactly because you might not get that shot again you know what i mean yeah, exactly you never know you never know what the fuck could happen you know get hit by a car it could be your last show you don't and of know. course like one thing I learned back in uh, seventh grade, which was a uh, middle school for me, is that, and this was from a teacher. His name is, um, I, I forgot his first name. He, his name was Mr. Whaley. And there was a, there was a saying that he had, and he was just like an earth and science teacher, but he said, don't base the future off of what ifs. Don't be afraid of the unknown ahead of you, right? Just well, be in the moment. It's completely out of your control, man. It's like, completely out of your control. And like, out of your control. That's how people become paranoid is because they want oh, totally. to accommodate for all of those future scenarios. Mm. But for example, if you believe in a multiverse or if you believe in <laughs> an infinite number of parallel dimensions or something where I have every no out- fucking clue what I believe in. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> and that's okay too. But like, if that's something you believe in, it's like, no matter what decision you make, as long as you're comfortable with it and as long as you deep down in your soul are truly content with what's going on and are willing mm-hmm. to fight for it or mm-hmm. you're willing to accept what's going on, don't well, worry about anything any, else. Um, the only thing in your control is um, trying to be a better version of yourself at any given Every time. day, so yeah. If you fucking work on bettering yourself as much as possible, um, you know, you'll probably find that your life will enhance as well. So exactly and opportunities might um come along as well yes that you didn't think would would happen if you you know work on yourself and um yeah because preparation and uh you know opportunity they come along and if you're ready for something you know you 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 can tackle it with with your best foot forward and yeah i reckon truly the only thing you can control is just bettering yourself so agreed doing that as much as possible you know yeah Yeah. so i I don't know like we've been definitely going on tangents but it it provides a more organic conversation and i i I do (laughs) like this um what do you want to talk about man (laughs) honestly like if you can remember where we last left off i think we were briefly talking about sound engineering we were talking about you getting into these heavier bands and stuff so i guess like a bit of white chapel and stuff occasionally all that stuff yeah um and I mean, yeah, when you get to, um, I don't know, you sort of like, I'm talking, what, I was about 15, 16, then I'm 28 now. So sort of that, the last sort of decade of music listening has just been whatever sparks my interest. It's nothing other than that. I like, I try to take in any and everything I can get that's orally stimulating. You know, I love music in general and it's not always like metal that i listen to it could be could be some chill dad rock from back in the day like it could be some super washy ambient music that's almost just like watercolor music in the background to to soothe the soul a little bit it could be i'm a huge like um i'm a huge like stoner doom sludge fan as well like that sort of dronier metal like the the longer more drawn out slow yeah as well um not just fast-paced heavy slams all the time like, gotta bounce love, it out yeah man i love bands like um yob and sleep and um, crowbar and like all, all sorts of cool uh stoner stuff so i'm probably at this point in my life quite balanced with what i listen to um and yeah i just go with whatever you know i like beats as well like you know like i don't it really i don't give a fuck what what category it falls into i just love yeah whatever sparks the the interest we go damn what's that like yeah and it, it, because i feel like the older you get the few and far between that kind of happens like happens a lot as a kid 
Yeah, because um, you're like, oh, I like this type of music. This yeah. is what I attach my personality to. Fuck oh, everything exactly, else. Man. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's quite a young person thing to do. Like, um, but it's natural. Yeah, your, your personality is you, whatever you listen to or whatever. But, yeah, like, like it, oh, no, it, it's, it's it's pretty shallow way of being if it's you know your personality. <laughs> Honestly, and the thing is, too, I think back on it, and I remember even having some issues. I think for me, the only issue I ever had was with a country and like mainstream American country in which I still yeah. think it's fucking garbage. But that's just my opinion. And yeah. um, I remember there was a point in time where I was like afraid to show people uh, what was it? dead mouse and skrillex because that was like where i first started out musically i'm like yo recess <laughs> is fire like bangerang yeah, yeah. bangerang like all that shit <laughs> it was fun and then there were artists like heavy, wasn't it? it was it was actually fucking heavy for it, yeah it was heavy bro and then you translate yeah. that into guitar it's like <laughs> like i think uh there was, was one crazy YouTuber. Gen- yeah seriously it was insane and like the fact that sonny moore right skrillex he was originally a guitarist and vocalist and from first to last and like that's you know that's that's, right. that's yeah, just yeah. integrated into the emo culture right yeah. and like that that was one of those og like crab core um emo bands and they happen to be on sumerian records or something mm. um but then he translated he turned his knowledge of guitar and he translated that into something electronic and it just caught everybody by storm i still want to learn um there's one song by skrillex called with you friends and it's just a nostalgia bait for me because um i did like multiple very cringy but i still love them um compilations uh photo slideshows with my friends and i just like put that song behind it and he i think microsoft or like the video editing software i had at the time it actually it it uh synced the photos with the beat of the songs it'd be like photo 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 like it was just like it was so good it was great um so i had old days man like the good old days (laughs) yeah um yeah yeah. with arms wide open to nostalgia they're they're fucking they're coming back dude i reckon they're they're on the way back (laughs) <laughs> I acknowledge just like Carnifex, I acknowledge yeah, their place right. in the scene, but I, I've never listened to Come it. Come to New Zealand Creed if you they're not listening to this. Why, why was I doing that? <laughs> Unfortunately. Scott Step, if you're listening to this, bro. Come <laughs> to New Zealand. It into I want to go universe. see Creed live. Free, come to New Zealand. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to manifest it, bro. I tried. <laughs> in it's cyberspace. So funny. You know. Right. <laughs> um, so I mean, ED, I started with EDM. And I think for the longest time, once I started getting to, into heavier bands, like people, there were people who were open to it, but I was still um, considerably sheltered and I wasn't uh, caught up with all the low key Tayo Cruz and Katy Perry that was just bopping at the time. And I was like, mm. I don't like this at all. I need to go heavier. But everybody else was just addicted to that type of stuff. Um, so it, it, it took me a long time to get out of my comfort zone and like really show mm-hmm. people what I was into and then finding heavier bands. Um, I remember the one week, mind you, that I thought Pierce the Veil was like the heaviest shit ever. And then my the um <laughs> yeah, the one week. And then um a friend of mine, her mom was like, What is this pussy shit? And she put on like Slayer and Cannibal Corpse and Marilyn Manson instead. Yo. I'm like, Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> schooled by the mom. <laughs> yeah, schooled by the mom, bro. <laughs> um it, She's it was like, Take time. that, you little bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. With the cannibal yeah. corpse, yeah, yeah that's times. a that's a fucking hammer hammer to the head, mm-hmm. if, especially if to not, someone that's listening to Pierce the Veil. Right? Yeah, oh my this. god, and especially in like this this, this like shaky old car with a terrible sound system. So not only was the music loud, but like the whole car was shaky. I'm like, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> it's like poor beat up old car, just like blasting cannibal corpse, and like even the windows oh, are moving. Fuck yeah. <laughs> it was great. Sounds those like a great good time. Times. It was. Yeah. That <laughs> like those those type of memories definitely stick with you. But yeah. getting into all that, it's like, um, so back to you. Back, back, back to you, Dan. Um oh, Dan. we uh you you were getting into heavier bands, mm-hmm. um, like death core, death metal, you were finding doom and sludge. So mm-hmm. If anything, shout like, out to my other band, Swamp Dweller. I play drums in a, Swamp in a sludgy do band. Yeah. Ooh, okay. That's actually a pretty cool name. I like that. Swamp yeah. Dweller, just like, yeah, 
like just <laughs> slowly moving through the marsh. The like we're trying uh, to we're trying to incorporate um our death metal influences with stoner and uh, sludge kind of music. Yeah, kind of stoner to DM. craft our own sort of sound out of it. So that's usually the goal. Hopefully, I reckon. Hopefully, we'll have an album out. Um, our first album out uh, next year. It's sick. It's coming. Yeah, it's most coming. of it's, it's already coming, recorded people. anyway. Yeah. Hell yeah. Um, yeah. so you were like getting into Doom, you're getting into sludge. Um, mm-hmm. if anything, I want to like fa- Oh, you cut out again, bro. This is the it's the uh you know, it's that time, folks. <laughs> it's that time. Can you hear me now? That's out on us. Yeah, there you okay. go, bro. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna um, like beat up this mic one day, bro. <laughs> like it's stop cutting out during a conversation, you're making me look bad. You um, can do like a wrestling promo leading up to the match with your mic. <laughs> you know? Do a few weeks of it. You know? And in corner number one, we do- have the Sure <laughs> SM7B versus you Sean wait till we take Crunch. the shit to the ring, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Hell, when I take the shit to the ring, brother, I'm going to get you. <laughs> Let's take it to the ring, bro. Throw it at the fucking wall. <laughs> yeah. seriously i got i gotta figure that out bro because that's that's gonna yeah. be annoying uh what was it heavier bands heavier bands sludge heavier bands, bands yeah. heavier bands sludge bands um i mean we're almost catching up to present day you know like, mm. uh i i unfortunately um over the oh, the last few years i lost uh both my parents so that was like a, a shitty you know like a lot of Fuck. grieving to go through and stuff and yeah also also lost um my granddad as well in that time frame that was like jesus yeah it was it happened all in a row it was like bing bang boom and i was like what that's the fuck? Like, awful a real yeah yeah it wasn't it wasn't fun like um for i think it was 2012 uh wow 2012 my dad got diagnosed with uh prostate cancer and he had a quite a long battle um leading up to uh 2020 when he died um and then uh my mom was like you know they were they were married for a long time they you know they didn't they weren't separated i didn't have step parents or anything they were the they were the ogs you know and then um uh mom passed away uh over about a probably a year and a few months ago i think um and that like during this time frame, it was sort of the birth of utilize the remains. It was a lot of, it's been an outlet for me to get those sort of gnarly grieving feelings out. And like, you know, yeah. all the anger and angst that you're feeling around, like you sort of, you have those like, why me moments? You're like, why, yeah. why, this, why is this shit happening at the moment? You know? And um, you still have to carry on with your regular life and get back to your job and fucking, you know it's, it's, people uh like their fear for a short amount of time but they forget you know and you still remember this shit and you yeah. gotta take it with you so i guess that's that's kind of the birth of utilize was like a, a grieving outlet in a way um and ever since then it's been just such a fucking cool project for me to have to be able to sink my teeth into and, and yeah yeah like that's it's catharsis you know really like so- I don't know why it's in slam format, but that's what I find the like. <laughs> well, um, you you I, have I love the energy live as well. There's a real yeah. groove to slam that everyone. It's a it's sort of like a party vibe to it that, um, I love the 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 energy transfer when we're playing and the crowd's moshing the fuck out and they're getting into it and head banging and I can see that they're letting their own shit out in that moment. You know, like that's that's special to me. So I think that that could be why why slam, but. Uh, yeah, that's it kind works. of the, that's what um that's how the that's how the band kind of started, just out of out of grief and fucking misery and having to deal with yeah. that bullshit. And, yeah. yeah, that's fair, man. And I mean, I, I can definitely attest to that, like with what I'm planning for my own band project, uh, and its first EP. It's like probably the most emo shit I will ever write. <laughs> but it's because it's good for you, man. It's good yeah, for you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um it's like when someone like me who i know from everybody around me for someone who is as nice and patient and merciful as i've been throughout my entire life despite even my own father just being a cock block and just getting in the way of everything in my life um it's like 
I've always tried to be patient. I've always tried to be understanding, optimistic. I even would level it to naive optimism because like I'm so mm. optimistic sometimes. I know what you that, mean by that, man. Yeah, it's uh. it's like you, you want to give a clean slate to absolutely everything and everyone in your life because otherwise a, you recognize it's a good default bitter. way to be, bro, because I yeah. think the flip coin to that is default, like pessimism, which doesn't yeah. really Being cynical. Doesn't help. Yeah, exactly. And then cynical people um you often find suck the joy out of a fucking room pretty quick like it's, it's either like, oh, you're, you're not fun to be around man like yeah oh, you may be right but jesus fuck it's <laughs> either the you room. end up it's either you end up being the naive optimist or you be end up being the exhausting existentialist yeah. Yeah. and i think you'll find we all find ourselves being little parts of these things here and there when yeah. we're a bit run down or like you know, I find myself getting more cynical when I when I'm not doing so well. You know? Right, but you, know, you got to sort some shit out. <laughs> yeah, the important part is like for the most part being balanced because yeah. this reality, this totally. world as we understand it, it requires balance. You can't be happy oh, all the time, but you can't be oh, miserable all the yeah. time. No, so no, like balance is the key, bro. Definitely. Balance is the key to mm. absolutely everything. As far as I'm concerned, totally. the idea, the science behind gravity also resides within balance. And mm. gravity just happens to anchor us to a sphere, which is also balanced because a sphere mm. is scientifically balanced. And it just happens to be in a There's big black There's something universal vacuum. about it, man. There's, There's something you know, universal. Cosmic scales, dude. <laughs> Perhaps <laughs> even omniversal. Like if, if you they... want to talk about multiverses, but you want to talk about the whole scale of it, that would be omniversal. I think and the, the universe lets you know when you're pushing things out of balance and in the wrong bingo. way. Bingo. You know? Yeah, yeah so. and it's person and, by person. Uh, if you're getting too much of the good shit, you know, it'll pull you back down to earth. You know, exactly. It will ground you. It will humble <laughs> it'll ground you. you pretty quickly. Yeah, exactly. It's 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 how it goes. It's kind of it, it's it can be fucked up sometimes because like you're doing really good in life, and then like you can you can attest it to the universe, or like if you're a Christian, you're like, oh, God threw a curveball at me, Jeebus. or something. Jeebus, Je helped Jeebus, me out, man. Jeebus, <laughs> Jeebus. Um. Yeah. He it's, just it's, licked my balls today, man. It was great. It's fucking awesome. <laughs> On this day, he was crucified, and then he licked my ass. Sorry, Christians, it's, but you're dumb. No, no, <laughs> no sorry. No. We're, uh, we're we're religiously neutral here. It's okay. Every, yes, it's like sir. it's like a comedy skit, bro. Like I don't give a fuck. I'm I'm Levian Satanist, but I'm also Ossature, and I acknowledge God. But my relationship, like him, oh, is with, like with my own father. So I'm like, I don't know if what God's the fuck like any of father, that is, but fuck my dad. Know, sounds alright. <laughs> yeah, like if if God's anything like my father, 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 then fuck God too. Um, yeah, because like you know he Piece he it's, it seems like God has always had that um Southern father mentality about him he's like it's either my way yeah. or the highway and that's how or the, the Lucifer story yeah, exactly. happened he's like it's either my way or you go straight down to hell you can have your own little fucking crib on me but here's yeah. the thing you get to hang out down there with all of the people in the trenches <laughs> because you want to buy by my rule motherfucker and like that's <laughs> motherfucker. the motherfucker like that's exactly what happened and shout um, out the bro levi number two <laughs> uh the second one <laughs> let's go let's go um so like yeah just with that in mind it's like that first ep um it's really just talking about how i felt and feel that i'm almost always and exclusively taken advantage of but there was one situation back in 2020 that for those of you who know the details of that cool good for you you know that story because mm -hmm. i've ranted and raved about it uh since 2020 but um Let's just say I was not even the second option. I was the third option in a oh, relationship. Right. Oh, right. And it was fuck fucked. Um, you gotta, gotta know your self-worth, brother, and know when yeah. to get the fuck out of those scenarios. Dude. Absolutely. And I did. And <laughs> then, you know, it, it was like I'll talk about that on the EP once it comes out more or less. And then I'll be screaming, I'll be singing and kind of sound like a woman or something. Um, because I did that with the first demo so far. But sometimes it's better to just be a little bit more emo even if you're trying to be in a deathcore band or in a slam yeah, band dude. like get emo if you bro. got if you got some shit to get off your chest there's you know no way no bingo. better way to do it than with a band or then you bingo you know, it's a lot more healthier than actually inflicting or... violence on people in public you oh, know 100%, what I mean? bro. 100%. <laughs> 100%. but 
It's it's crazy. Um, so I, I wanted to ask earlier after we were talking about like m- more or less your musical journey, you getting into heavier and heavier and heavier music. Mm. Were there any band projects or bands that you were in, whether in high school or like maybe straight out of high school um, mm. before you utilized the remains or um, mm-hmm. um, uh, sewer? I dweller. played in a um, my high school band was called Dust, <laughs> Um which we later found out was already like an eighties heavy metal band that mm. was like called dust. We're like, Oh fuck. You know? <laughs> so it's, it's one of those moments you're like, fuck, I should probably next time I come up with a band name, I should see if it's already, a, already a band name. See, there's right. one of those growing moments as you, you're learning and stuff, you know? Um, I mean, we were originally called human dust, but one of the members was like, I think we should drop the human bro. Just be, dust <laughs> like, yeah all right let's, let's said god that. drop the human um i think there's there's a there'll probably be an ep and an album out there the ep was called god skin i think yeah that's cool i like that and the album was called beyond flesh that's and it like fuck man i was pretty proud of it for high school riffs like me and my bro um shout out steven edwards he's a good can uh me and him grew up playing guitar together and that was our like project together and um yeah, he wrote probably majority of the riffs on that album, and I had a few, and um, that would have been some early, early, early engineering work of mine using like Superior Drummer and Axe Effects and crap. Like yeah, that. the album sounds like shit, but <laughs> that's another trial and error hey, of you know, like learning how to do things. And... Exactly, man. Trial oh, and yeah. error. You you put your foot <laughs> in the door, dude. I'll tell you what. High school was such a fucking joke, and like. My buddy um, in this new band that I just joined as of today, he could attest to this. We were talking about this a lot today when I was hanging out with the boys. Just so many chicken scratch logo band projects that didn't mm. fucking go anywhere. <laughs> yeah. And I'm oh, like, man, I would love yeah. to be the vocalist, but I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> fucking, I, 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 would, I would argue like, good luck talking to someone who's in a, in a prominent band these days yes. that hasn't had a few fucking throwaway projects in there in the exactly. lead up to the to the good one you know mm-hmm. like, like it's kind of where i feel like we're currently at like there's a there's something there's something good here with utilize that we can we can make the most of and it's probably the first time out of any of the projects that it's really kind of felt like that so yeah I'm and that's always to, just such a reassuring feeling i'm sure that's just refreshing for someone who's been trying for a long time to make something happen you know it's like, like dating it's, bro like you try so many <laughs> yeah. times, you date so many people, and then you're like, "Fuck it, should I even try?" And then just like, "Oh my God, R- Rochelle, is that if your you, name? I'll meet you yeah. at seven. And like, <laughs> yeah, I, I I haven't been in the dating game for a while, but it was it's can be tedious, man. I, I, know, I try I way feels. too hard. I'll tell you that right now. I try way too hard. So that's the and thing. Again, Eric can um yeah work on yourself and just be yourself and eventually you'll attract a like-minded person or someone that's right for you you know it's so funny that's the one thing i've always been so stubborn about i'm like no i think i'll just go on facebook dating and it's like the fucking it's like the the cheapest knockoff version of any dating app possible man it, it's so dating. i haven't even i don't even know that is <laughs> it's terrible is what it is but it's free it's such a yeah the problem with the modern dating apps is it's like you're, you're just judging it off the most surface level thing which is like a little blurb in the photos like it's so yeah well i mean you don't get any of the human element of of meeting someone yeah. in person like it's, well that, that's that's the thing too is like half the time these days with the dating app culture it's like you have a bio you have what they think is their most important details in the bio that way you kind of get like a sample or yeah characteristics or exactly yeah, music yeah. taste in which like yeah. uh bumble that's the primary one i use right now if not facebook dating so yes i use two okay don't don't judge <laughs> ladies um, i'm on two <laughs> i'm on yeah um open <laughs> catch them out there man open Fucking market hit it now hit it now motherfuckers Right. Download Bumble. Fucking download catch this Bumble. Guy. Keep swiping until you come across Sean, motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like on there, what I think is really interesting is not only do they they provide a more like intimate, more human interaction, but you don't exactly immediately um, get just easy access to contacting them. With mm-hmm. Bumble, it's actually a more femininely driven app. If you match with someone, it's like ladies first. They talk to you. If they don't, forget it. And I kind of prefer that in some cases. Yeah. It's a slightly different twist on the other ones. 
Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, Tinder is a nightmare. I'm never going on there again. That is more <laughs> or less a hookup app than an actual dating app, and it is cancer. Everybody, yeah. do not go on Tinder. I'm telling you, it is a waste of money. I went Fuck negative like back in 20, 2017 on accident because they're like, oh, my gosh, you should get pre premium. I'm like, no, but I'll add my card. And then these mother f like, oh, that pissed me off. I was like 100 negative because these 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 punks, they're like, oh, yeah, he totally signed up. I'm like, no, I did it. And then <laughs> my, my Chase Bank, they're like, hey, why are you 100 Dude, negative? number I'm one, like, man? You don't pay for it. Yeah, that's you're you're not you're not, you're not wrong. You're not wrong, but back then it's the first I was, schmuckery. <laughs> I agree. I absolutely agree. And my my geezer, he had to like pull me out of that pothole, and I'm like, this is never happening again. He's like, I agree. I'm like, sorry, but now Facebook dating, um, Bumble, all those like they they've gotten a lot more better, and they're a lot more um they're better safe places when it comes to actually meeting people. I've successfully met a couple people through Bumble. Um, neither of them like worked out in the end, but like, you know, it, it works for what it's worth. And, um, the, the thing I was trying to get to is, um, they also have like music. So like, well, I make it sound like there's music in the app and you're just like, Oh my God, you want to go on a date in Maracas or something in the chat? No. Um, they, they match with your Spotify account. So like you get to, you get oh, to, so you can see what music they're into. And stuff yes. Like and that. that's also how they match you. Sometimes it's like, Hey, this person also likes corn and gorillas. Yeah. Okay. Y'all should meet up, you know, but yeah, yeah. It, it, it's a lot more safe. It's a lot less uh, predatory, I would say yeah. than it was before. Like God, I'm, I mean, I'm... you certainly like, you don't have to overlap too hard. Like um, no. my girlfriend and I have a few overlapping tastes, but for the most part, we're, kind of into our own stuff you know and that's how it should be it's like yeah, maybe it's match on overlap. one band but like <laughs> oh, we and, match on a few but yeah no it's uh, like maybe you both have a favorite restaurant or something but you don't want to be <laughs> the same person like well, the that's... cool thing is when it's when it's kind of that way it's like um you know you find yourself getting into shit that she likes it's like oh exactly you know, I, exactly. I don't know i'd like this things and she's often new listening, you things know? yeah man it's cool. it's cool that's the best thing about dating and that's actually what I prefer, really, is when this other person is like, for example, me, Metalhead, Metalhead Caveman, Deathcore Caveman, or whatever. I think you the froze. The mic and the video. Or was it me who froze? You froze. You froze. I froze. <laughs> I was blaming you this whole time. <laughs> Apologies. <laughs> no, you're fine. You're fine. But um, some something I did notice, and this is something I gravitate more towards, balance, right? We were talking about mm -hmm. that earlier. I would rather date- Key to like, life a quirky like librarian bookworm who's like all quiet right and she's like kind of considerably shy i'd rather date someone like that than date like a fellow metalhead lady or like maybe yeah, exactly. even happen to meet and happen to link up with someone who regularly regularly is a gym rat right but mm -hmm. like i'm at home all the time i would love to go to a gym but i also don't want to pay the membership stuff like that it like it causes buy a some, balance buy some uh dumbbells and do some shit at home man exactly i had dumbbells before i had dumbbells in tennessee but uh the family i was living with well they took their stuff with them so i'm like no dumbbells and sad Damn. but <laughs> um we th this is like actually one of my favorite conversations on the show this has been just oh, natural cool. it's not even like formatted it's like oh, it's you're just saying that bro stop it stop it <laughs> <laughs> Okay. You're you're really fun to talk with, man. Oh, thanks, bro. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah, I'm just chilling on a Sunday afternoon, man. There you go. I was playing playing a bit of guitar earlier, so it's it's nice to chat with you too, man. Yeah, my fingers are all callous from playing bass earlier, but I was having so much fun. Oh, they yeah, bass is a bit rough on your fingers, man. Those thick strings. They yes, and brand yeah. new, brand oh, new yeah. strings. I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. this is sounds great. Good. Yeah, it sounds, sounds so good. good. Well, I'm what do you a... use? I like the um. I recorded. Uh, I use the Daddario Pro Steels. Those those ones. Oh, that's what, um, I, that's what I used when I did the bass on the fucking album. Right. All I all I know is that you're talking about the strings, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. They've got um, a real nice sort of clarity and like fucking. Yeah, I I've been back to them. The 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 music shop closest to us, Guitar Center. Um, I always get Ernie Ball Slinkies. Oh yeah. 
and I got like the really thick ones, like the ones that can yeah. tune down to A, mm -hmm. and it's so nice. <laughs> nice. The I can lower finally the play. Yeah, the lower the better. Drop A, baby. Um, yeah. best I mean, thing. We're ever. we're we're in drop B flat. Oh, well, we're probably we're probably like the lowest drop tuning you could kind of really get away with on a six string, maybe. Like, gotcha. With heavy strings on it, but even then, um, my old guitar that I used that was twenty five and a half inch scale, uh, couldn't properly handle it. So I had to get a solar. Um, I've got a solar six string that's a baritone. It's twenty seven inch. Uh, yeah. six string, which are m most seven strings are twenty seven inch. So it kind of um. It allows you know the the tuning to work, <laughs> right? No, it's got an Evertune fun. bridge on it as well. If you know what they are, and they're fucking Ever -tune amazing. Bridge. Evertune yeah. bridges changed my life. People, they're fucking awesome. <laughs> I, it, I it says it in the name. It never it, it ever ever tune. It's fucking <laughs> um shit. You know, another word for it could be never goes out of tune because those ah. bridges are fucking amazing. You set I'll them up say. properly, and you never have to tune your guitar. Like it's so cool. You have to fine tune it now and then, like with the little Evertune key. But yeah, man, it's it's a game changer for me, dude. Especially Ooh. being like a frontman vocalist, it's like you've got so much to work on live and do, and you might have a bit of crowd chat or right. something going on, and you got to maybe announce the songs or something or something. You know, it's like having to tune your get as well. It's such a pain in the ass. Yeah, so <laughs> not having to worry about tuning my guitar has been fucking amazing. Just like going Shout back out. and forth, like you hope, guys are amazing. You guys, ho hope you guys are having a good night so far. Are you? Still, <laughs> no, fuck that. Are you still with us? Um, <laughs> and like, honestly, man, it's it's been the biggest sort of technological game changer in electric guitars for me f right. since like forever. Since like the Floyd Rose or something. I don't know. I might have to look into that myself. I didn't know there were options yeah. for bridges that made it to where you didn't have to tune as much. That's that's. I couldn't tell you if they do a bass model or not. Ah, oh, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not that clued up on it, but mm. the one I've got's fucking sick. Works sick. a treat. Let's see. Well, in that case, because we're talking about gear, and like I don't know shit about gear. I have like a Scarlet Focus right for my vocals, and then I have like a what is it? A cloud microphone, cloud of fifth, mm. a cloud lifter thing, um, for the mm -hmm. mic cable. So like. As someone who does rhythm guitar and stuff, as well as vocals, what have been mm. like some of the more profound products that you've collected over the years for your gear collection? Um, fuck, that's a good question, bro. Um, <laughs> um yeah, well, uh, love my solar guitar. That's yeah, especially with the Evertune, that's been profound. Uh, fucking having a good, um, I can't, I picked it up last year, I think, uh, a good. A uh, ten band EQ pedal. If you're using tube amps, it's mm. fucking in the especially in the FX loop. Um, you can get a nice slam scoop going, so it kind of makes it sound a little more controlled through the amp. It's fucking yeah. yeah. That was a game changer for me on my pedal board. But as of recently, uh, because we're doing more traveling and a lot more out of town shows and stuff like that, I'm starting to um, well, I just acquired. You're trying to compact. Gear. Yeah, I just acquired some gear to make a, a little travel digital rig. So I, I got a um, Line 6 HX Stomp, and um, I just bought a Seymour Duncan Power Stage. Uh, they're quite small units. You can fit them on a uh, little pedal board, so it'll be, you know, really small. I could take it on planes with me. I could, you know, sick. pack it in my suitcase if I wanted or, you know. Um, I'm getting sick of having to borrow amps at every out of town show. Like, yeah, <laughs> the ones we have to fly to and stuff. I can't, I can't bring my heavy tube amp with me, really, man. It's not feasible these days. <laughs> like, it's, I'm, I'm, yeah, if you got a road case for it and you booked it in for like, I don't know, overweight, oversized shipping in advance and stuff and get it checked off, you can make it happen. But it's like, I don't know, you can't. It's just, uh, it just doesn't seem feasible to me anymore. Yeah. So I'm having to go down the digital ant modeling road and make it happen so that, you know, we can just have tone wherever we go. Yeah. You know? mm. no, so that's, that's actually really fun. That's actually, yeah, speaking of, yeah, I reckon that's actually a big game changer is being able to do that for fuck's sake is pretty cool. Like, <laughs> Um, I'm talking about it like people have always had these options, but it's it's only as, no. as uh, I don't know, in the last 10 or 15 years that they've really developed. 
where it's a viable option to take on the road with you a digital app modeler so right um yeah i guess back in the day you didn't have a choice apart from borrowing amps and organizing gear everywhere you go or if you're fucking big enough like motley crew have a big truck with all your gear (laughs) in it but or a big private plane with all your fucking gear in it but um yeah these days it's like diy styles you got to make it work how you can and um yeah i'm yeah currently constructing a sort of travel friendly digital uh amp unit at the moment so yeah so if anything too in that case like regarding all that gear um can we uh sound off on the uh the like the the groundbreaking pieces of gear that you have right now yeah uh yeah that hx stomp that's going to be a fucking groundbreaker for me dude line six line six hx stomp um the evertune bridge is a fucking definite game changer uh if i was going into a tube rig i couldn't do it without my um classic pedal board set up it's behind me over here right um the green one that's a, yeah that's my sure wireless thing uh that's goes into the um uh that's an isp decimator to g-string model so it's like a four cable um goes into the effects loop and goes into the front simultaneously um and i split that off and it goes uh overdrive just into the front and then i've got this mxr 10 band eq which goes into the effects loop as well um and all of that's in the pv triple x high gain head which is my favorite fucking amp of all time Sweet. and uh, i've got an angle cab currently with me but i've got a mesa oversized cab at my shed and i've got a marshall cab at my shed and i've got a angle head as well and i've got a couple of other tube heads and I, I fucking love tube heads man they're, they're amazing but as far as being a traveling band they're just they're yeah just at the band shed i reckon so we'll be able to whip them out for local shows and maybe shows we can travel to uh local like close to to our hometown but um as far as that goes yeah i'm going to be moving into the digital world soon so how much would you reckon all that shows. cost together well, all my gear yeah. i don't even want to i don't want to <laughs> think got, with all my other shit as well it's like i don't even want to talk about it, how much it costs. <laughs> like tens of thousands of dollars oh my happening. god yeah, yeah. damn it's crazy I mean, oh, it's people. my only hobby, bro. <laughs> yeah, that's true. You know, like you're, you're not exactly collecting any collector's edition items. You know what I mean? I, I, I love vinyl, so that's my that would be the thing. I yeah, that would be the collector's edition. I'm working on my vinyl collection. That's that's a cool wee thing to collect. What what uh, records do you have on vinyl right now? I've got quite a few, man. Uh, nice broad range from like yeah, my Sugar Records to like Suffocation and Cannibal Corpse Records and what um what did i recently pick up i picked up two sangui sagabog records recently and some frozen soul and uh i've got some stoner records some yob some clutch uh mastodon records i got gojira records i got fucking devon townsend records some of his oh, stripping cool. and weird stuff uh yeah i've got quite a wide range bro i got what? some local new zealand stuff as well right sick um what some what are some of the local new zealand bands that you have on vinyl oh, fuck. it's probably a good thing to delve into bro like yeah uh, yeah there we go <laughs> new <laughs> zealand bands over the yeah, segue. <laughs> new zealand bands over the years have been hugely influential on me growing up since i was a kid um but i even i would say possibly even more so than international bands just because of where we are like yeah, it's, we're it's so like these isolated are from the rest of the world yeah I mean, they weren't when I was a kid, but now a lot of them are my now friends they are. growing up. <laughs> yeah, but now they are. but uh, yeah, fucking like seeing them, like oh, it is, it is possible to start a band and do some cool stuff in New Zealand. Like that's kind of the vibe of when I grew up. It was no one's, you know, there hasn't really, especially when I was younger, there weren't really any bands succeeding with uh being a middle band from New Zealand, like it's a hard hard graft like we don't have the audience man and um like if you're gonna do it you have to fly fucking 15 to 24 hours routing to get somewhere that it is worth it to start promoting right. a band. like it's a hard graft man um so 
yeah, it's some of these New Zealand bands were even more influential on me growing up just because they were doing it and um, you could see it happening and it's like, oh, fuck, maybe I could do this one day. Like, right. Um, so who would have been? Like early years, it would have been bands like Dawn of Azazel. I think they were from Auckland. Quite a quite a heavy death metal band. Like I think they called themselves Death Thrash in the early years. Um and fuck, they've got a few good records, man. I'd recommend checking them out if you can. Uh, Dawn of Azazel, that is. Uh, Depths, they were like, uh, they're still around, actually. Um, they uh, kind of like with the early, during the Deathcore era, they were our, like, fucking Acacia Strain. They were our Whitechapel at the time, Ooh. you know, like. And when I was getting into a sound like that, having a, a New Zealand band that was kind of sounding like that as well, it was like, whoa, holy yeah. shit. Um, yeah, shout out the Depths bros. You guys are fucking awesome. And uh, oh, can't wait to hear some new shit, what you got brewing up. Please release mm -hmm. that. Uh, please? Yeah, <laughs> please. Um, <laughs> then another band that was massive to me was Zer Styron from Christchurch. Uh, they released a sick album um, and broke up after they did the album, I think. Um, oh shit it's kind of sad but yeah a lot of a lot of new zealand bands don't really make it past an album or two. Oh shit um, so to the the ones that are continuing past that you guys are fucking awesome and keep doing it man um so we got donna vizazel depths and what was the third one i'm writing these down zer styron zer uh, Z i think z-e-r-s-t-i-r-e-n zer styron oh uh, verse yeah, yeah. Zer Styron. Nah, okay. That's that's an <laughs> interesting name. Okay, I'll definitely check these bands. I don't out. know what the fuck it means, but they were sick. <laughs> um and then in more recent years, um, my bros and organectomy have been yes. they've organectomy. been flying the flag for uh our country as far as putting metal on the map, New Zealand metal on the map, you know. Um, there's been other bands I should mention, like Ulcerate, they're from uh New Zealand as well, and they they've I've heard of them hard before. Graft over the years, and they've toured like maniacs uh, across the world, and um, they keep putting out absolutely amazing, phenomenal like death metal albums. It's like it's pushing the boundaries, death metal. It's not just like paying homage to old school death metal or anything like that. There's a bit of that, but yeah, no, they're really carving their own sound, and That's it's not sick. for everyone. It's pretty full on, like it's pretty chaotic oral onslaught, but yeah. Um, uh, you know, it's pr it, like a very proud export for us as for New Zealand metal. Um, yeah, and organectomy, holy shit! Like organectomy, uh, man. They're basically yeah, the they, reason I'm here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they, um, you know, being such good friends of mine as well, it's been cool to be close to the action and um, see them go stride to stride and keep, you know, making the most of the opportunities they're getting and, um. I know full well that they're gonna fucking take over the world, man. You yeah, and, seriously, watch the dude. Space, dude. They're fucking they're, amazing. They're gonna if if they aren't already, I know that they are going to be like ingested level at some point, if not oh, already. Dude. But I'm pretty sure they already yeah. are. You know. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, um, definitely a massive influence on what what I do. Um, yeah, and um, yeah, it's that that New Zealand middle scene is yeah i can't even put it into words really how influential it's been on me yeah growing up and to where it's gotten to the point of making my own music today like it's yeah probably more so than a lot of international music like, right yeah. so I, I did have a question too about like the new zealand musical uh hemisphere i guess i would mm. uh, hemisphere i don't even know if that's the right word Fucking but like how small we are man we've got such a cool middle scene I, yeah i do want to say that yeah these days like growing up it was a bit thin i think but right um or maybe i was probably just too young and what didn't have access maybe to just the, yeah like no internet soon, but... and like you didn't know yeah. absolutely everything that was going on because yeah, exactly. it was still myspace yeah. era and but... these days it's really healthy and we just did I'll, uh, we just did about eight shows over the last couple of months in our home country and all of them were awesome with great turnouts and um, high energy crowds and right. people buying merch and people excited to be there. And, um, you know, it's like, to me, that was like quite a good sign. That's, oh, fuck. Like, yeah, the scene is very healthy here, but it's just so isolated. And, right. Um, 
Yeah, it's just smaller scale compared to probably what you guys are used to. So. Right. So if if not metal, if like for example, Orconectomy, you would say is kind of like one of the flagship metal bands right mm-hmm. now for um mm-hmm. for New Zealand. What is Different. the prominent genre of music over in New Zealand? Like what is the uh, one that rocks the charts that you usually hear about and you're like, fuck this, organectomy's right. better, right. you know? Um I don't know if there's necessarily just a primary genre or sound, but there's definitely been some standout pop bands over the years. Right. That, um maybe um it's almost like a dub reggae root sound you know that what? really pops off in New Zealand. It's um, Alien Weaponry, bro. Oh yeah, that now that's sort of like an anomaly for us, I think. Um you know, they were one of the rock metal bands that are lucky enough to get Yeah. You know, on the international stage. So I almost forgot about I, I them, wouldn't man. say that that's a reflection of what your average New Zealander um, No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> but um but that's like definitely you know, a name you hear from new zealand it's like oh what's this band with like the the, the, the blue cool face paint, that, you know yeah yeah they're promoting our um indigenous culture uh the maori culture of new zealand which um has been you know i guess like many indigenous cultures has been messed with by like sort of western british culture right <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah and um the, the struggles with that and sort of protecting your your culture is it's very important so very important um i guess uh it's cool that they have those themes in their band and they're you know quite young kids so like um you know all the power to them all the power to them man yeah fucking good on you so i hope they keep going further as well i guess i talk about organectomy being the flagship band because that's what that's what hits home for me yeah it's it's like it's like organectomy that's usually playing with like some of my favorite bands and there's yeah exactly oh well it's like that's awesome well here's a here's a question a simpler version of that question do you ever listen to radio like when you're driving around uh, that's no nah, it'll be hooked up no. to my my phone my, okay my okay fair <laughs> that, yeah. that kind of knocks that question off the table because no, I, I, I used to, ask, to when like, i was a kid but no not not anymore no right yeah. well if anything i guess i'm I'm gonna try to attempt this do you remember there being any like new zealand local um artists or musicians at the time when you were like isolated you you, you didn't have the option mm. to listen to bands and stuff like were you hearing anything local now, on the when you radio? mentioned radio actually when i was a kid there was this one um on a sunday night religiously uh it was called the axe attack um and this this fucking legend paul martin used to um host it and he would promote the fuck out of local um metal bands and hard rock bands and would always weave um, New Zealand artists in between the hot metal acts that were going on around the world as well, uh, and classics. So actually, yeah, fuck a lot. I got a lot of my favorite music growing up from that radio channel. Um, he would do a lot of giveaways, like oh, email in now and or call in now, and you'll win this bloody CD from fucking Lamb of God or this CD from Mastodon or you know, like um, yeah, he was he's a pretty big deal uh, if you were into metal at that era um, in New <laughs> Zealand. So, uh, yeah, shout out to the Axe Attack and Paul Martin for fucking soothing the ears on a Sunday night. <laughs> Did any of the bands you've mentioned before ever play on that radio? Like on, yeah, on yeah. Sunday night? Yeah, yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. Even like yeah, closer, more local um, to us, like we had a band called Osmian uh, from Invercargill in Dunedin and they... Uh, they used to get played on the X attack and um, I thought that was fucking cool. It's like, Oh, maybe I'll, I'll be able to make a band that could get on there one day, you know? Right. Mm. You should definitely manifest. I don't think it, I don't think it's, I don't think it's going the same way it was. Uh, It might just be like an internet thing or something, but yeah, definitely it's not on because this was on like one of the mainstream radio stations of, of New Zealand Uh, on a Sunday night. He got a few hours to pump metal. So it was actually, yeah, it was really cool. So like, what was it? Just like Katy Perry and like fucking oh, Tyo Cruz and the stuff. The station, on the, radio? the station <laughs> is, uh, you know, how original is this? It's called the Rock. Uh, <laughs> that's what. I... <laughs> so I think you know what you're in for. There's just like a lot of, a lot of those starter kits. Fighters. Like, yeah, Foo Fighters. That, that's probably a good way to describe it. a lot of Foo Fighters. Right. Gotcha. Yeah. And then on well, a Sunday night was the Slayer. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. I mean, at, at the very least, uh, 
aside no not aside um instead of like and just like imagine how boring that would be if you because you guys didn't really have a prominent scene back then it's like the radio mm. is considerably dead it's just like white noise mm. most of the time you at least get something yeah. you know you get exposed well, like to they, the rest of they, the world i guess the mainstream radio has definitely plugged the hell out of the the pop bands of new zealand so yeah, yeah I can't, um i don't know see. it's it's always a thing man it's funny um i think it, i just had a memory when i was thinking about the rock. Ah. I, remember, I remember this listener calling in and heckling them one day um, <laughs> during during their daytime schedules when they're playing like foo fighters and shit and he's right like, he calls up he's like why don't you guys play like real rock and they're like what do you mean he's like when you play like dying fetus like in the like <laughs> middle of the day like in the the mainstream radio station and i was like fuck yeah dude on you bro <laughs> fucking sick real rock like, dying yeah, like, fetus. It, like yeah he was kind of out of touch with like yeah the the climate of what was going on i suppose yeah. when you play like real rock like dying fetus <laughs> like it's so good to hear as someone who knew, yeah, knew Dying Feet. Just oh, fucking loved so them. Funny. I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah, we probably should have. Like, you know, like, like, Holy like, I'm shit. Sure, cut it. I'm cut sure it. people working during the day, like in a customer service job with that in the background, want to hear Dying <gasps> Feet coming up. on. Yeah. They're about to like fall asleep to Foo Fighters into the, like, <laughs> like, oh, oh shit. Bro. Holy <laughs> <laughs> fucking grotesque impalement comes up. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> yeah that's the shit i live for dude and like so there was the, these little isolated incidents of like yeah middle kind of reaching our our culture in new zealand but yeah it's still very much underground i i think mm. you know yeah but i mean i think with with help from bands i not to, not no bias no podcast in session bias going on okay i authentically think this i think with bands like utilize the remains with organectomy and alien weaponry amongst others you guys i can definitely see that your scene will be growing exponentially oh, going into the so, near bro. future i hope so i can definitely i confirm with you for uh organectomy yeah they, they're growing our scene man and uh i hope we can a little bit too in our own way so right yeah thanks for that dude That's absolutely that. hopefully yeah I, I would love to push it as far as we can and be you know ambassadors for new zealand middle like, right it's, like I'd so far for that flag yeah from, from mm. what i've heard on psychotic abyss so far i haven't listened to that much cannibal corpse so this is also coming kind of from a place of ignorance but i can mm. definitely see like utilize the remains being the cannibal corpse of new zealand going into the near future just <laughs> like that'd be awesome dude <laughs> yeah i can definitely see I mean, that happening man big influence on me so yeah i'd, I'd, I'd love that fuck yeah uh, and we do go for that uh, the vision I started for the band was that no bullshit, just heavy riffs approach, like strip away the stuff, you know. Yeah. Even Cannibal Corpse are probably a bit more technical than what I, I'm going for, you know. I'm going for really fucking dumb bludgeoning riffs, you know. Like, But that's why you never settle. Lead hammers to the skull, you know. Yeah, that's why you never settle. That's why you keep growing. That's why and groove you... oriented, bro. Groove yeah. oriented. The uh, groove, bro. <clears throat> a lot of metal can be too chaos oriented where it's just yeah. high high energy and high tempo and uh, without the groove it's like you can use that as a as the a groove is a builder balance, to baby. slip into the groove back into it but if, if to me when songs don't have any groove i tend to be a little disinterested you know like, when it's just like chaos and just violence the whole time and yeah. then there's like no break it's like well it's the same thing as going on a jog and never stopping like you're gonna eventually so, yeah. just collapse <laughs> And I mean, each to their own, if that's what fizzes you up, if you genuinely um, resonate with pure chaos, it's a go for it. But, but speaking personally, I like to have a bit of, I like to have a bit of groove and um, groove I'm makes sure many so listeners better. can hear it in, yes. in our album, you know, like it's, it's important to me. Yeah. So, mm. No, it's, it's, it's good shit. Like it's, it's that balance thing again. If you don't have balance, if you don't have groove mixed with the violence, like sure, you'll have death metal, you'll have ruthless death metal, but like it's just balance, bro. Like hey. JD of Corn, like he, that's the only reason Corn sounds the way it does is because he also believes in balance. He's like, I don't mm. want to just go heavy all the time and like, rah, da, 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 rah. like <laughs> he doesn't want to do that all the time. And that's I'm like, cool impression, I, dude. Yeah, <laughs> I tried. <laughs> 
Oh, what the hell? 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 Anyways. Um, I suppose we probably should talk about the album. That's what you wanted to do, eh? Right. Well, I mean, mm. m- more or less definitely the, the, the conversation at hand, you know, just mm. sustaining that more organic nature of it. Um, definitely. It's, it's been fun to talk with you. So, I mean, before we do descend into that second half of the podcast session, um, I'm basically wanting to ask and pluck off of you five favorite bands, albums, or mm. people that have significantly inspired you and helped you contribute what you have to mm. utilize their remains right specific to utilize yes yeah uh um, no way right. it's not confusing five, five bands <laughs> five bands five bands um i'm gonna go off and say organic to me right from the bat uh you know seeing them being able to um achieve cool uh opportunity you know you know make things happen really in the slam world and be so close to home uh yeah yeah organic to me number one um kind of bands that push me over the edge to be like fuck it no nah, i'm starting a slam band I've, I've wanted to do this for a while um loved uh there was an album by the band analepsy do you know them yes yeah, yeah. there was a it's got the red cover with the fucking beams coming down so i think it's atrocity something i should know the name of it but i'm fucking i lose I'm it's okay with this shit it. yeah but it's uh <laughs> that album um was a huge influence on starting utilize uh there was a single by the band extermination dismemberment love Have them, heard them? Yep. yeah they um that was another big tipping point of like fuck yeah no i definitely need a slam band bro like this is some dank shit like um but also uh, that's been tried and true for me for the longest time would be Suffocation. I fucking love that band. Um, and I like the way they drop their slams out of like pretty ferocious death metal. Um, uh, Is a new was, album good? That's four bands. Eh? New album. Uh, I can only say I've listened to it once or twice, so I need to give it more love. But um, first listen, Heard. it was really cool. Yeah. So. Uh, Last band, what have we got? Um, probably like development, maybe you know, that's takes me back to high school. Started listening to development, and that's probably some early slam influence for me. Man, you would have absolutely loved the tour that Ingesta did coming through the states. You're telling me, bro? Yeah, 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 fuck yeah, I would have loved that. Like, all the the bands you just um, mentioned were on that bill yeah i know uh, <laughs> really all, shut up i definitely know my uh my friends enjoyed it uh, and touring on it as well so they you know they had a great time and uh you know they'll be back to the u.s as well organi do me will make their way back over and in some way shape or form right but um yeah so five. they'll probably be the is that five do we do we crack that not quite <laughs> i think that was oh, five no. close enough <laughs> close enough yeah um and what'd you say people don't know about people but i don't think i've mentioned him too much in this yarn but my all-time favorite musician i think is devin townsend just right because um and it's not yeah that's not very um appropriate oh, to utilize let that one slide but um it, it's broad because you know everything pulls into influence when you're making music and you're getting creative and I would struggle to say that his um, ability to compose like authentic music is that would fucking definitely seep into my process. So yeah, shout out Devin Townsend. He's like, yeah, my all time favorite, I think. Oh yeah. I like how genuine and how um, his ability to articulate emotion into music is pretty much second to none. I I believe it's amazing. Like He's in tune. He's spiritually in tune that guy. (laughs) I definitely if you have to listen to some would of disagree it. with that statement, but yeah. Sick. All right. Well, with that being said, thank you, um, Dan, for That's telling right. your story, having a lengthy conversation, but a really, really good lengthy conversation all the way <laughs> over in New that Zealand. Yeah. It it's been really fun. And now we shall descend into the second half of the anatomy crosscast. 
you're no longer Dan Ferguson. You are utilized the remains. So uh, okay, with I'm that in mind, with it. <laughs> <laughs> you're like my name's Dan, fucker. <laughs> yeah. Um, first question really is just like imaginary scenario, right? Maybe you're going back in time now with your most recent tour promoting Psychotic Abyss, um, and you have a fan walk up to you, and they're all sweaty, maybe even drunk. They smell like shit, but they seem to enjoy the show. So you're like, okay, fuck it. Like, what what's going on here? What what do they want to say? What do they want to ask? And they hit you with the, what does utilize the remains mean? <laughs> what's the reason for the band name, man? I think it's, it's it had a bit of a double meaning to me. Um, when my dad passed away, I got these um, necklaces made out. I don't have it on me currently, but they put their ashes in a wee like pendant thing. And I was like, I don't know why, just the term like utilized, they were making the most out of his remains yes. came to me. I was like, oh, utilize the remains. That's kind of a cool band name. Like it just kind of sat there. And then like musically i was sort of starting to chuck together a lot of throwaway riffs i had had collecting in the background for a while that's like cool sort of utilizing the remains of like some yeah. other shit i had going on and then it became this cool thing so it's got it kind of got a double meaning to it that one that's it's actually not super thought out uh another probably third angle to it is i googled it and no one else had the band name so that was <laughs> a big that was a big tick hey, in this you day have and to age check it's that quite first. hard yeah 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 and i made that mistake before so it was uh, i didn't want to make it again you know honestly that's really really cool because not only did you utilize the remains of like being a musician trying to get into it trying to do your homework mm. trying to create something but never finding a home for it because mm. i've i've known so many musicians that um most likely it's the reason for it like they have three different band projects and they're like mm. okay what can i do with this where can i put this i'm making all this music but don't know where mm. to place it but instead it you're definitely like, Screw uh, it. at the time i didn't have a place to put it so yeah it and was... then on top of that man you have that more like you have that more raw more human mm. meaning behind it which is very very personal to you that's where the term came from like that's yeah. where the, the actual term itself came from that moment I was sort of sitting there thinking about it and like yeah i was like i don't know you think too deeply about something sometimes and i was like you can never think too yeah. deeply about something <laughs> but you can get lost in the sauce and then <laughs> well depending on what happens I you're just that. like yeah it's 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 awful like sometimes yes you're definitely capable of overthinking but for the most part you just got to understand when to stop thinking mm -hmm. um but that's actually probably one of my favorite responses on the on the show so far there's oh, like cool. it has two go. different meanings it but it kind of does yeah yeah it's awesome i love that and it's also like the meaning is pretty thin as well in the sense that um i don't know i didn't i didn't think about it too hard like i wasn't it, yeah, it just happened. It's like, yeah, pretty it was very cool. casual. Like, yeah, it was very organic. You. Yeah, yeah. And it was like I didn't um I've kind of thought like in more recent times, I was like, oh, it's kind of cheesy sometimes that like no. you just gotta own it, own it with middle names, you that's know. So like, that's <laughs> such a sick name. I love that. <laughs> and especially with that meaning behind it, it's so much cooler now. Um oh, cool. Let's see. So what's the band's name? And like, what's the meaning behind it? We got that answer. Thank you um second question would be and i think you mentioned this earlier before for you as a vocalist and a guitarist i think we i think i confirmed it earlier to be a bassist right oh uh i mean i i play bass like a guitar player would play oh, okay bass. i do it to be able to record stuff and right gotcha i, I, w I wouldn't call myself a bassist <laughs> <laughs> i play drums a little bit that's, gotcha. that's my second instrument probably yeah. understood with that in mind um what is the most important part to you about writing any of the songs so far for utilize the remains and why i think we've already mentioned it man to right. me it's always the groove um maintaining it like a good head bang pulse like making stank faces happen like, yeah oh, yeah damn like that's good. which yeah fuck yeah i'm Get sure you saw the video i definitely did <laughs> make it like being able to um yeah just give people a moment where they don't have to think about their bullshit and enjoy enjoy sharing the with other people yeah yeah, yeah. and then um, for a short amount of time usually so it's it's nice right yeah. 
And then um, third groove. question, because always. yeah, groove and always, bro. Groove, groove and heavy, heavy riffs. riffs. Yeah, Let's it's do it. pretty, pretty important to me, man. And um, I guess the third question, this is like so many people um, in the scene like to probably want to ask this question often. And I don't ask it that often, but I'm trying to make it uh, a habit of it. Um, what genre or subgenre do you classify utilize the remains under? Why and how does it separate from other bands if you don't put it under a label? Okay. Um, I call it, you know, brutal death metal or slam. Um, I guess the main thing I tried to do to separate us from other slam bands was have a bit more diction and audible lyrics, like mm, more articulation. Less- yeah, more articulation and being able to like, there's parts where I hope like people can actually understand the lyrics in certain parts, you know, whereas I feel like a lot of, and I'm not bagging on it, fucking people do whatever they want. I love slam that's inaudible lyrics. Like, Igni- I listen to it, it all the time. Like, yeah, yeah, ignorant slam is um, it's sometimes really fun. There's a culture yeah, behind it. Yeah, it's fucking awesome. And the, it's honestly, it's mainly because I can't really make noises like that myself that I don't do it. Like my, my sort of, natural default is a more raw sort of traditional death metal voice yeah so like uh, and it works in their favor i think because i've actually had people say that to me as well is that i like that you can kind of hear the words you know whereas a lot of slam is just it's another instrument in a way right um which is what all you know a metal vocalist is another instrument but yeah, that's kind of something I find separates us a little bit in the genre slightly. Cool. Mm. Well, with that in mind, we have some of the th- like three of the most clickbait questions that um, your audience could ask. Utilize the remains, and so I think it is. A, <laughs> yeah, I think it is a really good time near the end of the podcast session to go ahead and do an under the skin session for Psychotic Abyss um currently so like track track by track is it yes yeah. yeah um and i did want to mention that this episode will be relevant to your current 2564 monthly listeners on spotify congratulations on getting to uh, more than 2500 as i only have three um it's always <laughs> great to see those numbers climb um Thanks, it's, it's it's always a pleasure um it's quite, sure. it quite surprising to us like it, it organically reached a lot of like playlists and stuff and oh like, hell yeah that's helped us get numbers up a lot like yeah that's, that's what it's all stuff. about man <laughs> that's what it's yeah. all about i mean they're pretty rookie numbers but still it's big for us bro we we it's from, something i think we had like 100 or 200 um when we only had our demo out there and now that we've dropped the album it's gone up to that sort of Fuck couple yeah. thousand numbers so yeah it's very very cool <laughs> I want to grow it more if possible. (laughs) Right. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I'm sure you guys will be, again, one of the many future flagship um, bands for New Zealand. Like, I'm I'm manifesting that shit. I know know that. So with that in mind, going into Under the Skin, hello, I'm editing now, um, or something. But basically, in this tiny section, or like, you know, obviously take as long as you want, but this tiny little segment inside the grand esque podcast that we've been doing tonight. Um, very appreciative of Mr. Ferguson here. As always, it's it's been so much fun to have him on. Um, we've had a really good conversation, but now we're gonna get into yet again another imaginary scenario. So imagine you're in a library. You're not in a band right you have nothing to do with utilize the remains so you don't have, you're like oh isn't that my album cover like on this book <laughs> no it's not um <laughs> so basically you go into a library you find this very very bright maybe it, it's even under a uv light you're like why the fuck is this book under uv light like it's so bright and it works but why is it like that why is it so <laughs> exclusive to have a uv light exactly so you pick up this book you see the album cover and as any book does right has the author on the bottom instead it's all the members in the band or something you turn it over 
and there is a small passage on the back of the book. This is the summary. This is the sample. It's like this is meant to get you to listen. Well, it's meant to get you to read the book. What would it say? Fuck. Uh, I mean, there's an overarching theme on the album, and I haven't really fucking fully articulated this in my own self, to be fair, <laughs> now that you're asking this. But um, I guess the overarching theme is descending into like real gnarly negative mental states as a human being like um we're dealing with um sort of issues in your psyche and dealing with both ex external problems that manifest within you and your own shit that manifests within you as well um it's kind of it's very much like a battle with mental health album you know like that's really what the the overarching theme is and it's pretty loose like it's not a concept album in that sense or anything right. like that um but that would be an overarching theme that links it all together you know oh yeah and yeah. if you had an explanation for any of the imagery depicted on the album cover and why you thought that best correlated with mm -hmm. the album title being psychotic abyss like what's going on on the album cover yeah well that's kind of that's you know, you can see, um, I should find it actually. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I suppose like that, that main sort of, that main skull or main fucking whatever that is, that would represent your sort of baseline, um, psyche in a way. Um, and then there's that gross fucking, figure that's trying to get its way in there and um you know fucking burrow its way in there that's the guy i guess with all the uh fucking you know holding his hands out and um yeah burrowing his way into your brain and making it happen and then those fucking snakes that are peeling out are the it's that's the bullshit that'll happen and affect those around you and you know really start to have a massive negative impact on your life if you can't control this you know if you can't get it under wraps really um and then underneath is pretty much the worst case scenario it's like you'll get pulled under into like, you'll start drowning soul pull yeah you'll start drowning and you'll get pulled under by the people that have already fallen like the those hands that are coming up are like people that have died from not being able to fucking get under wraps from it like um, get the help they need you know, get the help they need yeah and that's people like starting to grab at you if you don't sort it out so this guy's still above water but um not not by much you know yeah he's only surfacing uh, he's because only surfacing. of the school below him yeah because of the psyche <laughs> yeah. beneath him yeah exactly so it's that's kind of it. it's like a real psychedelic piece and that's another element of something i wanted to branch away from sort of more conventional traditional slam sort yeah. of uh, artworks is they're quite i don't know they're quite often quite dull and dark and yeah you know, gory uh, very digital and gory and you know i wanted to have more of an artistic just more of a painting-y you know yes. more vibrancy more psychedelic um sort of imagery in it like all the detailing and stuff if you really zoom in it's fucking awesome like yeah no seriously um, I, I love it it's it's very colorful it's very bright yeah and again and under part, UV of, light, part of the color off. as well the use of vibrant color is like this is our first album. We need to put ourselves on the mark. Like you need a shine. Shape or form. Yeah, we can jump out at people to make people click. It's like, but you know, it's a good way to like, oh, what's that? Like, if I saw that and I wasn't in the band, I'd, I'm pretty sure I'd click on it. You know, to see what yeah. it's about. Like, yeah. and um, I guess something about the album cover that might be a more personal question. You have the character on top who's kind of sitting atop what's left of your sanity like that's kind mm -hmm. of one way i'm interpreting it pretty much man. is there anybody um or anything in your life that you could probably compare to the figure on top that might be like weighing you down and kind of oh, causing you to bro. drown yeah i mean there's so it's so multi-layered in that sense the more like immediate tangible thing that comes to mind is just dealing with grief and loss and death and losing loved ones like quite in succession and quite quickly together right like all amounts to like just a whammy a feeling of like yeah like you're only starting you haven't even dealt with the last one and boom here's another one it's yeah like, oh, fuck. 
now I've kind of compounded and I've got to deal with two at once. And then boom, here's a third one. It's like, fuck. Yeah. Okay. I've got to, I hadn't even gotten over the other two yet, but here's another one there. Fuck. So it's kind of, um, yeah, that immediate one. And then even a deeper thing would be sort of probably more personal issues that have been carried over for years and years that you're putting off dealing with or um, right for whatever reason, you know, you find it hard to face to face with them or, um, yeah, getting on top of all of that shit is really, you know, trying, trying to, um, regain your mental fortitude in a way so that you can tackle life healthily, you know? Yeah. And it's a journey through that process is kind of what the psychotic abyss album is about, you know? Sick. Yeah. And, um, final question regarding the album art as someone who's trying to get into graphic art myself, it's always important to kind of like vaguely get in touch with the artist, get to know them a little mm -hmm. bit. So as someone who is operating within the musical hemisphere, the musical world over in New Zealand mm -hmm. for this album cover, did you get in touch with the local artists? Like who did you end up uh, inquiring with? And um, what was the, uh, the thought process behind working with them? There was uh, a stoner band. I really like called um, Bongzilla. Uh, and <laughs> That's great. They, yeah, they had a, I've got a giant poster that came from one of the vinyls I got and it sits like, it sits right above um, my workstation over here, my desk and monitors and shit, you know, and I was staring at it for ages and I was like, fuck, that's a, I love that artwork. I love the aesthetic of it. I love the detailing. Um, and I looked into it. I was like, I wonder who did it. You know, it's usually just the start of it. I wonder yeah. who did it. And I found his name in the booklet or whatever, looked into it online, found his Instagram. Uh, it's a guy uh, uh, called Eli Quinn. Uh, he, I believe, lives in Wisconsin, I think. Okay. Um, could, could be wrong on that. Uh, but yeah, shout out Eli Quinn. You're the man. You did such a good job on that cover. Uh, it came to life like so much better than I ever thought it could. So. He did a great job. His he conventionally tends to do more probably like stoner bands and stoner rock bands and things like that. So to I think, you know, it's even probably I think it's cool for him to be able to branch him out into the death metal slam world and stuff. And right. You know, he was <clears throat> so good to work with and um, you know, really easy to work with and made the vision come to life and um, I trusted him like I was like you do you man like I know I like what you do like just you know take this broad idea and roll with it you know right and yeah. um but um like he um, I was I was oh, I lost it brother so I was, I was gonna say something but I can't remember sorry I'm about pipe possibly pop no, it wasn't you bro it wasn't you no okay I was I was trying to think um oh yeah he this is what I was going to say. He was, when I initially proposed the idea, he was a bit like, hey, just so you know, I'm not, I can't really do the whole cannibal corpse thing, you know? And I was like, oh, it's all good. We're not, we're actually not going for that, you know? We're trying to go branch off from that. So, yeah. Um, yeah, he's like, oh, I don't really, I probably won't do the whole gore thing too much justice, you know? Like, that's not, that's not him. So, right. Um, you know, I reassured him. I was like, we're, we're getting in touch with you because we like what you do. You know, not, we're not trying to fit you into a box. You're not comfortable with, you know? Yeah. That's so good. That was quite important. You know? Hell yeah. And, yeah. um, I guess like, I promise this is the last question for the album cover, but this is just like, just for more insight, you know, this is more juice for the, for the fans, the 2000, more than 2,500 fans <laughs> of utilize the remains to just like uh, slurp up. You guys are... Right. Um, what, how, how did you end up like handling the major creative process with Eli Quinn? Did you guys send him the album early? That way he could just listen to it and like draw something up or, um, um like what, what were like some of the rough drafts and like the, uh, the, the main honestly, idea man, you had in mind? Honestly, it was purely conceptual and visual. I don't think he listened to the album until it came out. Like he never got a copy of it to, to make the art or anything like that. Cool. Um, yeah, it was purely uh, a verbal idea back and forth on email um, until we got something more concrete. And he's like, he did a rough, really rough, I think maybe sort of iPad sketch or something of like, I'm thinking of going down this sort of road. How does this sit with you? You know? And I was like, yeah, that looks like it was, it was really, I don't mean to say shit, but like, it was really like rough done 
like he was deliberately doing that so he didn't have to spend too much time if yeah. the idea was shit like he's gonna scrap it and do something else so i get it but yeah that's kind of how it started he's like i'm going down this road how does this sit and i looked at it, i was like that's perfect bro i can see like i know what your art looks like and i can see where you're going to end up with that um, yeah that's perfect let's roll with it so he got it right off the bat like oh yeah um and then he kept sending um more updates over yeah time. bits and, and pieces then, this is like where more I'm colorization. At, you know, more, um nah it's purely um he colored it afterwards once the black and white was done it's a hand-drawn oh. it's a hand-drawn um black and white outline piece um that he scanned and digitally colored so that's so cool yeah so it's a real art piece that's then colored in the box so it's kind of it's very cool so I had to sign off on the the actual art piece first before it got colored, you know. Um, the only, I think the only changes we made uh, were, there were just a small thing in the face of the, the character guy. Right. That was about it. Like, yeah, he cool. did a really good job. Yeah. Hell yeah. Easy to work with. And we're more than likely going to work with him again for the next release. So. That'd be sick. Mm. Well, with that in mind, we now have plenty more context and information on the album cover, the artist behind that and the creative process. So now let's go ahead. That, of course, and um, Dan provided us the back of the book summary for what will be Psychotic Abyss. <laughs> so now we dive headfirst. We get this album started. People are listening to it. We have track one. What is this about? Spawn of Delusion track one eh yes uh musically i just wanted to come out the gate swinging um you know i wanted a high energy piece um i wanted you know quite a few hard hitter good slams in there um the goal it was all one tempo start to finish there's no tempo changes or anything like that um there's little breaks but they still remain the same tempo pulse um uh and i kind of just wanted to attempt to set the standard for what's to come on the rest of the album like you know set the scene essentially Sick. um lyrically it's um kind of like a i guess it's kind of like a slight social commentary with your classic nerdy metal encrypted lyrics <laughs> um and it's sort of it highlights a frame of mind i see a lot of people adapting um and it's pretty much participating in delusion and yeah, leaning into delusions in a, what I see as an attempt to avoid confronting, um, you know, tr hard truths about themselves or purely to make themselves feel better about anything or, um, you know, I see it a lot and I, I just felt like sort of getting those feelings out and it sets a good precedent for that overarching theme of, um, you know, it's a good starting point for documenting the journey of mental health and stuff. It's like you can often start with delusions and sort of yeah. start with, you know, masking things in order to get by and not address things and not face to face. And, you know, like I say, I see it a lot in other people, but I know within myself, I've done it time to time over my life. So, yeah, it's in the title itself, I suppose. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. So we have that. Thank you for your second track, man. What, yeah. what are we, we derealization? Got a, derealization. Uh, so musically, I probably wanted to start to, you know, um, just something slightly more interesting for the listeners on this track. Um, the there's a cool sort of melodic dissonance in in the breakdown section, but then you're still met with some heavy brick wall slams. Um, yeah it's i find it's just slightly more interesting than the opener musically but lyrically um that's when it's about starting to lose control of your own psyche it's really about feeling lost in the day-to-day -day. um it's that feeling of a real disconnection from reality essentially and another another term from this feeling can be called depersonalization but yes that just didn't fucking quite sit right as a song title right so, right so we went with something a little more uh, easier I guess. and have you still, have you yourself ever uh experienced your realization uh probably slightly from time to time uh that's probably why it, yeah it's manifested on in the album <laughs> um yeah 
Track three, we have Immutable Suffering featuring uh, Vinny Henley. Oh, hold on. Minchington. <laughs> then the, the name was cut off. I'm like, oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. <laughs> about Vinny to sound Henley really stupid. Minchington. Uh, he plays in a band um, called Plague of the Fallen. Yeah. Uh, they're I've, I've they're another New Zealand band. And they're so fucking sick, man. Uh, check them out. They've got an album coming soon uh, amongst the rats. Uh, and that's some hard hitting fucking death metal, dude ferocious so yeah check that out um that's coming i think it's dropping next month december there's a few singles out already this stuff uh, this content out for it already so, so many bands bro so many so bands. many bands man i'm giving you good stuff good stuff good giving stuff you some homework <laughs> some kiwi <laughs> homework right but uh yeah he features that um in that track immutable suffering um that was kind of like another hard hitter um my goal for this song was to try keep write a song and keep it under three minutes, which I yeah I managed to, but I think it's like two fifty something. So I only just fucking made it happen. <laughs> um, I wanted to riff in, riff out, you know. Um, I, I found myself it's easy to get carried away writing stuff and then over convolute stuff. So this was really, um, yeah, hammer and nail down a simple hard hitting under three minute track. That's what that one was about. Um, and it's a broad stroke yeah lyrically it's a broad stroke uh themes about struggles with mental health depression and anxiety fucking helplessness loneliness all that stuff like yeah it's been this band's just been a great outlet for things like that and getting shit off your chest like that's a pretty broad stroke i guess depression track you know right yeah Let's see and what, what's after that we got bludgeon uh, beyond recognition bludgeon beyond recognition yeah um that was i think that's the first track from our demo that appears on the album oh, sure. yeah we already had a three track demo out for a couple of years before um this album and yeah this is the first one on the album that's from that demo um it's one of the first ever utilized songs written i think um and that sort of that first riff the main hook is almost just the archetypal slam for the original vision i've had for utilize it's the got the groove it's heavy it's you know um yeah and lyrically i wanted to scratch that itch of doing a dumb gory brutal horror classical death metal song you know um tough shit like very cannibal corpse inspired <laughs> gotcha <laughs> um i needed to get it off the chest like i've never <laughs> done one before so hell yeah <laughs> yeah um and I think that uh, that's like the first half of the album, I guess you could say, because it gets broken yeah. up with a little, a little instrumental in the middle, the desolate one. Um, and I just wanted, yeah, that really is. I just wanted to break break up the album a little bit for the listeners because it's pretty, it's a pretty weighty journey up until then. And then, yeah, just a bit of, I guess, yeah, a bit of reprieve away from, a bit of a breather before getting stuck into it again in the second half. Like, right just dynamics man it's it's part dynamics. of the craft. Yeah. we all we all love a break and it, it if you can make the album longer by adding in a couple interludes which my favorite band of all mm. time silent planet does like fuck it do mm. it dude why yeah, not go for it yeah. yeah i'm a big fan and i've always liked it in albums that i grew up listening to so yeah no, I'm definitely keen on that and then that kind of leads us into um soul, soul rock, rock which is the main single off the album, I suppose. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, it was one of the, one of the last tracks written for the album, like the most recent ones. Um, and it was when I was sitting down to get stuck into the ideas, I was floating around with it. Uh, I almost wanted like a bludgeon beyond recognition 2.0. That was kind of what I was going for. Um, you know, heavily groove oriented, uh, the outro riff on that, song is one of my favorite parts on the album to play especially live uh, oh yeah so i'm sure fun yeah it's really really fucking fun um lyrically it's about confronting your own mortality it's all about death um yeah confronting death meditating on death and i guess sort of realizing your sentient insignificance in this fucking existence you know right um coming to that realization of the like daunting cruel weight of impermanence in this life and shit like that that's what soul rot's about 
And I can only imagine that Alex Paul from Oregon Act to me, you're just like, I have to get him on this track. Oh, yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. And when I reached <laughs> out to him and he was all for it and he, you know, back and forth a few patterns and ideas and it was like, yeah, perfect, man. Um, I was so, yeah, I was so excited to have him on the track one. Like he's a good, good mate of mine. Uh, yeah. Shout out Alex brother. You're the man. Shout um, out. Yeah, he fucking come on my podcast soon, and, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if he get you know, I'm sure he uh, he may do if he gets a bit of time, but he's yeah. a busy boy. He's a busy boy. Um, he um yeah, at our last on our album tour, um, he got up and did his part at, at the Christ so show cool. where he lives. So that was that was really fun, and so did Vin as well from Plague of the Fallen. So that's yeah, awesome. it was a very special night being able to get the like yeah the guest vocalists up there as well um yeah that was cool um then it's from deceit and to disgust after yes, that. Sir. Uh, yeah that was the first ever song written for utilize um really yeah, that yeah that features on that previously released demo as well so cool um yeah it really encapsulates the early vision for um the band most definitely it's, it's just simple it's hard hitting um Strip away the bullshit. Just leave the sledgehammer slams, bro. That's that's all I want. <laughs> awesome. Lyrically, um, it's sort of battling with, um, you know, you grow up and you're being told things about life and the world and the way it is, and then when you get a bit older, you kind of it's the opposite. You're like, what the fuck? This isn't what you know. This is what I grew up. In. It's sort of that internal battle between those two feelings. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, it leaves a bad taste in the mouth and a bit of distrust. Uh, when you're sort of going through those feelings so i like then the track the, too that works yeah yeah it works for that eh? um that's yeah it's in the title there <laughs> and then the poison well is um yeah like i'm thinking about it now and i honestly can't yeah i gotta be honest i can't remember a great deal about the writing process for that particular song Fair. um i feel like it was a sort of a side product of coming up with immutable suffering at the time I had some other riffs that didn't quite fit in that song. And that's how poison well was born. Um, cool. Plays around with like inverted power chords, which aren't really seen on the album either. Other than that track. Um, lyrically, it's about betrayal to, to classic one. When someone close to you does or like say something that um, makes you distance yourself from them, I suppose. Yeah. That's a, Cause you got to yeah. distance yourself from the poison. Well, yeah yeah it's like oh you gone down oh. fucked it man why'd you have to do that <laughs> it's a yeah that's kind of what that's about cool uh nine would be uh, external ex lung external lung that's i think that's the last song from the 2021 demo that got a revamp on the album um definitely yeah another part of the early sound i i love there's one part of that song that i fucking love and it's the triplet feel old school death metal outro breakdown like that yeah i really love that riff in that song that's that's a i want to try to do something kind of again like that if i can pull it off but lyrically it's just getting bestowed with some sort of fucking it's a character that gets a lung disease and has to live off um like some sort of ventilator or iron lung or something in order to survive Rip. it's just a throwaway sort of story yeah I guess. um I got to admit, I didn't come up with the song title. Um, a friend of mine, uh, Kyle, he he came up with the song title. So I've always thought this would be a good name for a uh, good name for a metal song. Like, yeah, it kind of is, man. Do you mind if I use it? Nah, go for it, bro. This was one of those <laughs> moments, just with a mate. <laughs> yeah, I love that, man. Yeah, and um, then we can wrap it all up. Hey, that brings us to the the closer, the great uh, reset. Great reset. Yeah um that's probably the one i battled with the most writing it uh it definitely i had the most contentions with it and that's that's the track that had the most the rest of them almost didn't have any re-edits or revamps or anything they were written and then they were done and they were stashed away and then this one i just couldn't took ages to get sitting right and it took fucking yeah many different iterations and then it's funny because it's like what ended up being on the album was the very first kind of version like went full circle like try all this different shit and come back to the original idea it's like it was yeah it was kind of weird like that but it was all built or it was kind of i knew i wanted that 
outro to happen i wanted to slow down gradual slow down long dragged out one riff outro it was a matter of how do i get there like that right. was the that was the tough part um and i managed to work it out in the end but yeah, yeah. i kind of like yeah i don't like tracks that take a lot of work <laughs> so it's Fair. probably one of my least favorite on the album personally but <laughs> like fine um, so glad i'm fucking done with this album for now oh that's yeah very much the feeling on that track <laughs> Um, and lyrically it's an apocalypse track. It's just concerns with the current state of global affairs and fucking, Sick. um, the powers that be fucking the agendas they've got and like, you know, the corporate lobbying and the corporate corruption and all sorts of shit that goes on that influences every human being on the earth. It's like, I'm just worried about where the, where it's leading us. So that's leading us what to that doom. Track's about. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I can't, I'm not. I can't say that, but I, yeah, I'm definitely worried about it. But, yeah. I am too, man. I'm with you on that. That's the fucking album, dude. That's the it's fucking a, album. Yeah, it's the fucking album. <laughs> and I cannot wait to have the opportunity to listen to the rest of this record as I'm on my way home from uh, practicing with a new band, apparently, because I'm in a new band. I'm still like processing that. Good luck, that. man. I, I appreciate that. It's, it's like my first time it's actually... Fun being excited about writing music and of course i love making music for blind too but until i actually acquire musicians it's 400 dollars a track so <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. um but that, that's mainly my fault so i blame no one else for my terrible communication skills um in the creative process but um that was psychotic abyss that is yeah, utilize the remains um debut full-length record released independently correct yeah man yeah fuck yeah and um, working on a follow-up for the fucking next one so let's go it's in, it's in the cauldron the riff cauldron at the moment yeah hell yeah. yeah and um before we go ahead and wrap the under the skin session i've been meaning to add this little like spice in there too this pinch of salt or whatever after the entirety of the creative process for this album what lessons have you learned and like what are some personal things that you've gained creatively after completing this record other than you know oh, thank god the album's done or whatever <laughs> um that's a good question bro um get it right you know get it right <laughs> from the start like try to yeah don't don't end up in that position where you're reiterating the same shit over and over again only to use what you had at the start anyway so right yeah get get it right and you know believe in the the original vision that you had and the original idea that made you start like looking into it you know um yeah i i wanted a team like we did i did di guitars on this album um you know digitally protest processed and stuff so on the next album i wouldn't mind miking up one of my sweet tube amps um and sending that to our engineer um shout out michael soto from peeling flesh and slamnasium recordings oh he shit made our, he made our album sound fucking amazing so thank you bro you are the man um so he yeah another point of continuity not just with the cover art i'll probably end up getting him to mix the next album as well mix and master our, our follow-up record so oh yeah yeah um yeah just fucking yeah, keep perseverance, man. That's what I'm learning. Perseverance, baby. Yeah. yeah. Well, that will be the end of the Under the Skin session. That's for editing purposes. Um, and uh, as <laughs> uh, we're preparing to wrap up what is going to be episode, what is it, 51? 61. Jesus, 61. Good job. Thank you. Um, we should have, I had, I've, I had plans for so many more episodes this year, but can't force it, you know. It is what it is. Um, before we wrap up session tonight, was there anything else that you were wanting to uh, mention, promote? Because I know you guys, again, you just got done with um, an album release show, if not like a leg of dates over in New Zealand. So um, was there anything well, we else you were uh, wanting to talk about or mention before we wrap up session? Well, if you if you haven't checked out Psychotic Abyss, um, give it a listen. It might not be your cup of tea, but if it is, fuck yeah. Uh, fuck yeah. <laughs> yeah fuck yeah um yeah we've done with our album release tour in new zealand and what we've got coming up um is a three-day new zealand tour supporting obituary and psychroptic so um when those fucking death metal legends come over to our shores we're gonna be um 
yeah opening the stage for them and warming up the night and getting the crowd fucking hyped up for the for the big dogs and for the big that's dogs. What we got coming up it's in it's in early january you can get tickets now um uh, we're doing Auckland, we're doing Wellington, we're doing Christchurch. Uh, so yeah, come along to a show if you're in New Zealand or if you're traveling to New Zealand in that time. It's New Year's, so some people are doing a bit of traveling. So yeah, come along. Fuck yeah. Well, sure. ladies and gentlemen, everything in between to my dear cross core. This has been the Anatomy Crosscast, episode 61, featuring Dan Ferguson of Utilize the Remains. Their new album, Psychotic Abyss, is available now independently. They already have riffs in the Riff Cauldron. Um, they've been doing a lot of great stuff for their local scene, and I see them. And that's why I at least got Dan on here tonight. Maybe in the future, I can manage to get other members of Utilize the Remains on the show. That way we can spend make the that same... for you, bro. Yeah. That way we can, can spend the exact amount like the exact same amount of time for each member <laughs> <laughs> fucking earth dude yeah i could make that happen for you let's do it <laughs> but definitely one goal one intention is to tell the stories of every single member of every single band that we have on eventually and if not well we just continue reaching out to other bands around the world if you happen to be listening to this and you are interested in telling your story on the Anatomy Anatomy Crosscast, just be sure to reach out to me. My email would be seancross84462 at gmail.com. Please do not fucking spam me or you will get blocked. <laughs> but um, reach out for official inquiries as far as promoting your maybe upcoming material. Maybe you have an album that you're wanting to get on public domain. You're independent. You're in um, a distant. You cut out, bro. I will fix this one day, I promise, people. But um, I, no matter I where... It's still recording or not. That's why I see that. Oh, yeah. No, yeah. It, it definitely still is. I'm surprised because yeah, my, my, uh, my Zoom premium or whatever the hell got canceled today. So I'm like, okay. But um, wherever you wherever you might be in the world, I see you guys. I see the um, the the numbers rising as far as worldwide listeners. Thank you to everybody who does listen around the world. It's it's really meant a lot. And again, if you happen to be a band, just reach out to the email. I could I would be happy to host you on the show. Um, maybe be your first podcast host. That type of stuff. That's what this is all about. People is telling the stories of as many musicians and bands as possible telling their stories, giving them some spotlight, using whatever amateur sense of marketing I have up in this noggin and just helping you push your material. But until next time, thank you guys for listening and we will see you in episode 62.